IPTV。Major funding for this program was provided by Friends of Iowa Public Television. Auditorium in Des Moines, Iowa. Iowa Public Television Sports presents live the 1992 Boys High School Wrestling Championships. A tournament that started with 624 competitors and now has only 78 remaining. As this evening will determine three team titles and crown 39 individual champions. Good evening, everybody. I'm Doug Brown with Tim Johnson, and we're happy to be here again for this wonderful three-ring circus known as the Iowa High School Wrestling Championships. And this year, Tim, we had a different format, and I loved it. Well, it was a great format. The beauty of it, it was a double elimination. That means a wrestler could come in, have a disappointing first round, and then get a second chance. It was great for the wrestlers, great for the fans, and great for the sport of wrestling. And this year, again, remember that we have three matches going on at the same time, 1A, 2A, and 3A, and because it's absolutely impossible for us to show you everything at once, we have the Iowa High School Athletic Association rotation system on a three-year basis. There it is, through 125, we'll start with 2A matches. 145 and down, then 3A, and then on up to 1A for 189. We'll start at 3A at heavyweight because it might mean a team title for one of the competitors. And remember, too, we get as much action as we possibly can on every mat, and we also have our floor reporters, Dean Borg and Dick Trotter, who've been with us for many years, and they'll give you expert commentary on what happened that you did not see. Now, those are some of the highlights, but boy, I'll tell you, the big highlight for everybody here is to see that kid, you know, that one young man who is a great star, and we have some terrific individuals here. Well, Iowa is always strong, of course, but this year, a great percentage of the outstanding wrestlers are underclassmen. One of those underclassmen is Ike Light. Ike Light from Lisbon is going for his third title, and there's a lot of tradition here. Of course, Lisbon, they've won their 13th straight, or their 13th title, overall title. Ike Light's part of a family that has done a lot for Lisbon. Shane Light, a four-time state champion. Zach, a senior tonight, going for his second. What a great family. One of the senior outstanding wrestlers is Paul Wilkerson from Wapolo. He's a defending state title, going for his second, and he owns 86 consecutive wins. And the neat thing tonight is he has led Wapolo to its first state championship in the history of its sport at the school. And then in 3A, we have Jeff McGinnis, one of the better wrestlers ever to come along in the state. He owns 127 consecutive wins. He's going for his third title tonight. He's also a national freestyle champion. And another neat thing is he could lead Iowa City to its first state championship ever. The terrific thing about that is that those three individuals are team leaders for teams going for state championships. Two of them already won, as a matter of fact. And with me now is Ron Seaman who is the publisher and editor of the wrestling newspaper, The Predicament. And Ron, let's talk teams a little bit. Lisbon won it on the second day. Lisbon's awesome. You bring 10 people in here, that's magnificent. You can't believe how good Lisbon is. And I think uh, this first-year coach is just deserves a lot of credit for the effort he's put in. Of course, that's Chris Lembeck. Now, at 2A, Wapolo's wrapped it up. Wapolo really fought out of the pack. You know, that was no one knew who was going to win in 2A. And Wapolo has really done their job. They're out in front and got a nice lead, so I think Wapolo uh, really deserves a lot of applause. But well, we have some thrills ahead of us tonight because the 3A is not yet decided. No, 3A is uh, anybody's guess, and it may be Mr. Jeff McGinnis that you just mentioned that uh, makes the difference when we come up to 3A. 3A is uh, Iowa City and Cedar Falls going at it, banging heads, and uh, it might all go all the way to the heavyweight match, uh, Doug, before they find, that, uh, find out who the champion is. That's right. Cedar Falls leads right now. But it's anybody's meet in there, and it's a fun meet for everybody. We're going to enjoy bringing it to you. It's live here on Iowa Public Television, the high school wrestling championships coming up next on Iowa Public Television. TV worth watching. 
reveals the possibilities. View the potential during Festival, March 8th through the 22nd, and year-round on Iowa Public Television, a resource for Iowa's future. Seven on Iowa Public Television. We're back at the 1992 High School Wrestling Championships. And now let's join PA announcer Mo Kelly for tonight's opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise? The colors are being presented by the Council Bluffs Abraham Lincoln High School Color Guard under the direction of Jay Nugent and assisted by Nate Benzing. The guard will be played onto the floor by members of the Abraham Lincoln Percussion Ensemble. Ladies and gentlemen, the Council Bluffs Abraham Lincoln High School Color Guard. from Oskaloosa High School, Oskaloosa, Iowa, accompanied by Bill Henderson at the organ, Miss Amy Voorhees. <laughs> Whose broad 
there go the colors here on the mat side at Veterans Auditorium in Des Moines, where we're going to be bringing you live the wrestling matches, and there are team scores to be shown here. I know you may be looking to find out what happened and how your team got there. Well, first place is worth 16 on down through. Uh, first place is worth 12 to a team, and then on down to three for uh, sixth place. And a fall for an individual gives his team two points. You see the advanced consolation was a point for everybody. Technical fall, a point and a half, and a major decision one. That's, uh, that's gonna make a difference as the night goes on. And there's the match scoring, how individual points are scored inside the match. I think one of, here again is Mo Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't it great to live in Iowa, and aren't we proud of the fact that we've got the greatest high school wrestlers and the greatest high school wrestling fans in the entire country? to Bill Henderson, our organist, that wonderful color guard from Council Bluffs, Abraham Lincoln, and I want an encore for that soloist, Amy Voorhees, Oskaloosa High School. Wasn't she tremendous? Come out here. <laughs> what makes our program great? Well, it's administration. It's great coaches, it's great young athletes, it's great officials, it's great support from the media, and it's great support from our fans. A little bit of everything. And every year, we try to honor some of those people who in a very varied set of ways have helped us make this program what it is today. So we're going to do that right now during the next few moments. We're going to thank and honor some of those, both past and present, who have made great contributions. The Iowa High School Wrestling Hall of Fame was established by the Iowa High School Athletic Association and the Iowa Wrestling Coaches and Officials Association several years ago, and we'd like to induct five new members in our Wrestling Hall of Fame this evening. Presenting the plaques representing the Iowa High School Athletic Association David Hardy, Executive Assistant Secretary. And our first honoree is double honored tonight because not only is he being inducted into our Hall of Fame, but he's also going to lead our Grand March a bit later. Al Baxter was a fine wrestler himself in high school, a state champion. He placed as a Morningside College wrestler. He then began a coaching career at Lisbon. It took a few years, not many, but a few. He finally got the program going, and in a period of six years, he had five state team champions. He then went to Buena Vista College. He's still there, and he's still turning out plenty of winners at Buena Vista College on the collegiate level. So our first honoree this evening, and also later our Grand March leader, Al Baxter, and accompanied by his wife, there have not been too many Iowa high school wrestlers in our long history that have won three state championships. It's tough. You win one, the pressure increases. To win that second one, you do that, the pressure gets even greater to try and win a third. This is one of very few, less than 40, Iowa high school preps who have ever won three state championships. He later went to Iowa State, won an NCAA title there, and then became the coach of the Iowa State University Cyclone Wrestling Team. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say that we don't only honor him for his great contributions to our high schools, but also on the collegiate level, I think you all agree with me, He's been a class act. He has represented himself, his university, and all of us Iowans in great fashion as the coach of the Cyclones. So let's honor our Hall of Fame inductee from Ames High School, Jim Gibbons, accompanied by his wife, Annie. Up, 
we talk about four-time champions. A real rarity, we've only had eight in our state. This young man was the fourth man to accomplish that. Two titles at Waterloo Columbus and two as an Ames High Prep. He later also was an NCAA champ at Iowa State and in recent years has been an assistant coach of the Cyclones. He's accompanied tonight by a very proud mama, and that's his mother, B. How about a big hand for Hall of Fame inductee, Joe Gibbons? <laughs> Next up, a longtime wrestling coach in our state, a fine wrestler himself. He competed both in our state high school meet and in NCAA competition with high finishes. And then he was a coach for a number of years. Uh, the final 16 years at Iowa Falls High School where he had some outstanding teams with many representatives in state tournament competition. He's back tonight to be honored, still teaching at Iowa Falls High, no longer coaching, but certainly had a great career as the coach of the cadets. How about a big hand? for Hall of Famer Ron Jones, accompanied by his wife, Mary Ann. <laughs> Next up, this gentleman started the program at Mapleton Maple Valley. In 21 years, he had one losing season. That was the very first season. After that, they were all winners. Over 150 victories in dual meet competition. No longer coaching, but he still does some officiating. How about a hand for Hall of Famer from Mapleton Maple Valley, Dick Kingsbury, accompanied by his wife, Karen. <laughs> Now the Iowa High School Athletic Association has an Officials Hall of Fame, and this is for officials of all sports, baseball, football, the entire gamut. We've honored less than 10 wrestling officials, but we're going to honor one tonight by putting him in the Iowa High School Athletic Association Officials Hall of Fame. He's had experience as a wrestler himself, in high school at Cedar Rapids, Washington, in college at UNI and at Iowa University. He's been a coach, did some coaching of the sport at Muscatine, and has been a longtime official of the sport. In fact, he's working again this year in our state meet, the 19th time he's been a state wrestling tournament official. A new member of our officials Hall of Fame, from uh, Cedar Rapids, how about a big hand for Bob McNeil? And those are the Hall of Famers. There's uh, Bob McNeil. You'll see him on the mat tonight as an official. Mo Kelly making the awards of the Hall of Fame winners in 1992. Now we're going back to Mo Kelly for some more awards before we get to the Grand March and tonight's championship wrestling. But that's what's happened with this group that we're going to introduce next. Representing the Iowa High School Wrestling Coaches and Officials Association are their officers, if you'll just take a step forward when I mention you, Doug Gilford of Starmont, the current president, Jim Kenyon of Roland Story, John Monroe of Indianola is the secretary, and Jim Steyer of West Marshall is the executive secretary. They will be presenting the plaques. And we're going to honor coaches of the year selected by other coaches and officials. In class 3A, his team is right up there in the running in class 3A. He's had a 16 and one team in duels this year had six qualifiers here at state from Cedar Falls, Coach Gene Doyle, the 3A Coach of the Year. His assistants are Keith Carmen, Ken Gallagher, and Mark Almstead. Next up, the 2A 
Coach of the Year. A 15 and 5 record in duels this year. Four state qualifiers also in the top six in the standings this year at our state meet. 2A Coach of the Year, Bob Yillick of Carlisle. And his assistant is Greg Bruce. The 1A Coach of the Year, his team a 17 and 2 dual meet record. Four qualifiers at state this year. A big hand for the 1A Coach of the Year from Bondurant for our Ken Estlang. His assistants are Craig Benke and Joel Birchmeyer. Also selected is a junior high coach of the year. This gentleman has been coaching at the same junior high for over 20 years. And we'd like to honor our junior high coach of the year from Charles City, Gordon Kettleson. And the Coaches and Officials Association has also selected an official of the year, 16 years of experience, his seventh state meet this year, Mark Bean of Iowa City, the official of the year. and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. In one moment, we're going to have our grand march, so be ready. Thank you. That's Mo Kelly of the Iowa High School Athletic Association, who does his usual remarkable job of remembering all the facts and figures about individual people who come out and be given awards. It means a lot to the sport, and it means a lot to the people involved. Well, it's a, for many of them, it's a once-in-a-lifetime award and experience. It's just great for each of their towns, too. And there's Al Baxter from Morning Sun, yes. and uh, he's come a long way, baby. He sure has. We just saw him inducted into the Hall of Fame and win that medal. And a little while ago, Tim had a chance to talk to him about this great honor. in your wildest dreams growing up in Morning Sun, Iowa, did you ever see yourself on the same night being the Grand March Escort and being inducted in Wrestling's Hall of Fame in the greatest wrestling state, Iowa? I'll tell you, Tim, this is just, a, it seems like a big dream. You know, I've had so much support from uh, the people back at Lisbon when I was coaching there, and uh, the kids worked their hearts out for me, and uh, the parents and the administration gave me so much support, and then I went to Buena Vista College, and uh, administrators and uh, the people up there and the students, uh, student athletes that I've been able to recruit, uh, they're the ones. I'm getting the, the award put in my hands tonight, but uh, those are the people that really deserve it, and I'm very fortunate. You've been a successful high school coach. You've been a successful college coach. It's apparent you love working with kids. Oh, I love it. Uh, I really do. And... Uh, you know, every year uh, we've got a new crop of freshmen coming in and some seniors going out, and I think uh, what uh, pleases, me, pleases me about as much as anything are the young men that uh, graduate and go out and get a job. And uh, I'm down here and uh, watching these guys, uh, you know, coach and, and so forth. They kind of know how nervous I was when I was watching those guys wrestle, so it's a great feeling. Thanks a lot, Al. Now let's rejoin the Iowa High School Athletic Association for the traditional Grand March. They'll be led by Hall of Fame inductee and 1992 Grand March Escort, Al Baxter.
Baxter out in front there at the Grand March. This is a thrill for not only the, the young people here have won their sixth, well, someplace in the top six, but people in the stands looking down. There are all the cameras around. The well, and, and, and all the people at home watching right now. It's just, you know, it's pride in communities and in cities. It's great. Yeah, you may have seen somebody in there. You wondered how he came out today. and. Uh, look, looking at the young man next door, and you know that he finished somewhere in the top six. The ones who are doing the jumping around and looking the most nervous, of course, are the ones that still have to wrestle for the finals tonight. Everybody else, numbers three, four, five, and six, have placed already. It's from Veterans Auditorium, the Grand March of the 1992 High School Wrestling Championships. And our congratulations to all the award winners in the top six. We'll be back with our first 21st year of coverage of the Boys High School Wrestling Championships. And our first weight, 103 pounds. And as we said, let's go through it again with the Iowa High School Athletic Association rotation because it is simply impossible, no matter how we'd like to try, to bring you all the matches at the same time. So we're on the 2A mat for the first four weights. That's where we start. And then we go to 3A, up through 145, 1A through 189, and 3A at heavyweight because that one might bear on the team championship. It might very well. And so uh, we'll keep our eye on the other mats, and we'll, as soon as the match ends early, of course, we'll let you go elsewhere. And Dick Trotter and Dean Borg are going to be standing by to tell you about any matches that, unfortunately, you didn't see. There's no perfect answer to this every year. But we uh, think that it's best that we bring you a, a match in its entirety. Well, let's let's go back to our public address announcer, Ed Winger. I'd like to call your attention to Section 18. Let's give a warm Iowa High School wrestling welcome to the governor of Iowa and a great sports fan in Section 18, the Honorable Terry Branstad. Sitting next to him is uh, Press Secretary Dick Boss. Well, here we are in Veterans Auditorium. We're going to watch 2A. And the 2A 103-pounders are undefeated Chad Bennett of Ballard High School in Huxley, coached by Larry Jackson, and Mike Dennis of Iowa Falls, coached by Rick Caldwell. Dennis's record 35-7-1. and one. The referee here will be Keith Poolman of Charles City. You see a lot of uh, officials that you've seen in our college wrestling series throughout the years and throughout this year. But this is tension time for the 103 pounders. Chad Bennett against Mike Dennis. There's Mike Dennis from Iowa Falls. 35, 7, and 1. They've both been ranked in the top six in the, in the state all year long, and Chad Bennett, the number one ranked wrestler at that weight in his class. Bennett from uh, Ballard, Huxley just north of uh, Des Moines, and uh, the Iowa Falls, of course, just a little further, farther north. Chad Bennett is only a sophomore, and Mike Dennis is only a junior, and they're each 16 years old. That often is the case here at 103 pounds. Normally, uh, you have 103 pounders maybe when they're freshmen up to another weight later on and they keep on rising and sometimes 145 or so by the time they're a senior you, you see occasionally amazing jumps in weight over a period of time so now here we go Bennett of course 37 and 0 undefeated 21 pins this year Bennett is in the light uniform in the in the gold the orange on the left he's the man with the fireman's carry that's his favorite move does he have the two? Yes, he has. Keith right. Pullman calls it. Two to nothing in favor of Chad Bennett of Ballard, and he's nope. trying to put Dennis nope. on his back. No rap. No rap. What a way to get the nerves out real fast is to come out fast, hit your favorite carry, and say, hey, if it works, great. And he, it worked for him. 2-0 for Bennett. Certainly did. Two nothing. Remember in high school wrestling, it's two minutes each period. Two minutes each period, and they do the overtimes the way we've enjoyed seeing them this year. If it's tied at the end of regulation, they go at it. First man who scores wins in a two-minute period. And if somebody doesn't score them, you flip a coin. 
And have another 30 seconds. Now, the other matches, by the way, going on at this time are Class A, Travis Johannes of Montezuma against Jason Keenan of Ogden. And then in the 3A match, 1A again, that's Travis Johannes of Montezuma against Jason Keenan of Ogden. And 3A, it's Troy Yegi of Pleasant Valley, whose team has done very well here, against undefeated Eric Keller of Indianola. But you're watching in the main match down here, Chad Bennett against Mike Dennis. Bennett is riding. He took, made the first takedown on a fireman's carry. He leads two to nothing. He's trying to tilt Dennis now for more points, but he's ridden him all through the first period. Chad Bennett's got a chicken wing in. He's been riding it for about a minute now, trying to tie up the wrist and the chicken wing and tilt for two points. As we said, he's a pinner. 21 of his 37 wins this year were pins. And of course, Mike Dennis, no slouch himself, 16 out of 38 wins are pins for him. First period over, guys. We have no time left in the first period. That's the end of it. Keith Pullman flips. Choice. And the choice first. goes to Bennett. Research. He defers. He lets Mike Dennis Take make down. the choice in the second, second period. period. Set. Reserving his choice for the third. And Dennis, not surprisingly, goes under, although he hasn't been able to get out here. Right. That's a, a judgment call on the young man right there. He says, if I'm going to win this match, I have got to get out. Well, right now, this Chad Bennett looks like a very strong rider. He puts in a tight waist right there. He works the upper body cuff. And look at that near wrist. He's looking for that near wrist to pull it in. He's got a chicken wing in already. He's setting it up. Chad Bennett, only a sophomore. Boy, these, these two are going to be back again next year, of course, because Dennis is the junior. Well, Chad Bennett placed six as a freshman, and he loves to wrestle. He was on the junior national team for the Iowa Wrestling Federation last year, and when you wrestle uh, in the summer, in the spring, in the winter, it's be usually because you love the sport. Look at that chicken wing. He's, he's tough with that, and not only has he had it in, he's had Dennis flat on the mat with it. Break, minute guys. 14 to go. You use it or get off Official it, okay? talking Thanks to Chad Bennett. You hear that we have a microphone on Keith Pullman. He says to Bennett, use that that bar that arm or in. find something else. Goes down on the ankle right away to cut off the first move. It works again. Good basic wrestler, Chad Bennett. He does the right things at the right time, and he keeps He's keeping Mike Dennis from Iowa Falls broken down and keeping his hips on the mat, see? You've got to get your hips up, like he has now, but with the now he's up. So you've got to get your hips up if you're going to get yourself going. So it's two to one, and Dennis wanted to make a shot right away to get back in this match, but here is the front headlock from Bennett, and here he comes. You see he's stuffing the head there, keeping Mike Dennis down on the mat, unable to uh, finish a move. Can he come around behind? Can he get behind that arm? Yeah. Yes, he can. Not quite yet, though. He has 25 seconds to score, and Dennis working on the, on the leg to hold the move. Two, two and there's the takedown. Advantage Bennett. He's now ahead four to one. Russell, both guys, keep working. Bennett wrestles with a lot of confidence for a sophomore. Like I said, he placed in last year's state tournament, and he wants to win it this year. Where really it works the upper body when he's on the mat. Likes the chicken wings, the arm bars. There's the end of the Good second period. Guys. Now we have two Good minutes good. to go in a state championship Touchdown. match at 103. There There's uh, Rick Caldwell, who is Mike Dennis's coach. His man is down four to one. Rick Caldwell has two men in the finals tonight. Now here for the first time, Dennis gets his chance on top. Now he trails by three, so he's gonna have to turn Bennett or turn him loose and try to take him down. And I suspect he's gonna try to wanna to, uh, turn him if he can. Has to hold him first. Bennett comes around and reverses him. Six to one. Undefeated Chad Bennett. There's Larry Jackson. He's done a great job at Ballard Huxley, five years as head coach. The tight cradle, he's scoring big points, but he's also looking for the back real tight. But he got three Dennis on was that. able to get out. He held him for five seconds, and it's nine to one. With a minute and ten to go. Here he is with a bar on, trying to turn his man again. Bennett has been really tough there, and that's uh, 
top you position. Okay? Well, his basic well, wrestling has impressed me. He's done, like I said, he's done the right things at the right time. He has good it. basic skills. Look at okay, this. Okay, he up. stuffs the head right there, just spins around, and then he sooner, pretty soon locks it up. I see he cuts that, uh, cuts down on the leg, takes the ankle, and just keeps uh, from his man Dennis from making any response uh, to his to the whistle. That's Here it. comes Dennis. That's There's it. the first point besides an escape for Dennis. It's nine to three. Uh, it makes uh, he has 35 seconds to get back in this match. He's got to move it here. He's going to have to turn uh, Dennis. He's got a cross face on him underneath. But whether he can make anything out of it remains to be seen. He has 25 Break seconds. Stalemate, right down. Stalemate. You Four. know, an interesting thing with uh, Dennis's coach, Rick Caldwell, the matches tonight was at 7 o'clock, but his sister was getting married at 7 o'clock here in town. He was supposed to give his sister away. Well, he made the, <laughs> made the right call as far as Mike Dennis is concerned. He needed his coach. And one run, one run. Dennis is unable to Neutral. hold Bennett. Bennett is out. The Huxley wrestler leads. The Ballard wrestler leads 10 to 3 with only five seconds to go in the double-A 103 match. And the sophomore from Ballard is a state champion in the first winner of the 1992 center guy, center. high school wrestling sure championship. We're showing you live here on Iowa public television. Very solid win for Chad Bennett. And he'll be back two more years. Congratulations to him and to his coach. Let's go to 3A. The match is going on over there. This is between Troy Yeggy and Eric Keller. Eric Keller is undefeated, and he is leading here at the moment with about 19 seconds to go in the match. He's in the upper position, leading six to two and riding. He has a tight... Uh, Keller has a tight uh, ride right there. He's working the arm bars and really keeping the pressure on and keeping Yegi flat on his stomach. And he's winning the state championship. And that's the 3A championship for Eric Keller. He tops an undefeated season. Eric Keller of Indianola, that's his 40th win for the year without a loss. How about that? Now we still have some time left in uh, 1A. We have 40 seconds to go. And here it's Travis Johannes of Montezuma against Jason Keenan of Ogden. And the Ogden wrestler Keenan leads here four to one, 30 seconds to go. And the man in the control position on top is Keenan of Ogden. And this is his first trip to the state tournament. He's excited about it. And it looks like uh, he's only a freshman in high school and he's gonna win a state championship How about if that? he holds on. A freshman from Ogden. No, it hasn't been that long that Ogden's had a program in wrestling, and uh, I can remember when they started it a few years ago and hoped that they would do well, and now here they have a man in the state championship, 103-pound, 1A championship match, and leading 4-2 to two with 10 seconds to go. But Johannes of Montezuma on the bottom is trying to come out from that leg position, but Keenan sticks in that tough half he is the oh, winner. That's, that's a really exciting, Doug. Freshman, his coach Brian Reimer's really excited. That's neat. Congratulations to Jason, to Brian Reimer's, and all his friends in Ogden who are awfully happy about it. He's 103 pounds, and he'll be about 20 feet tall. Yeah. So we're through 103 pounds. Tonight we're going to be showing you the award stands, you know, and we're going to be able to give you the whole business as we proceed between the rounds. But of course, it takes a little while for them to get set up before the 103 pound awards are given, and we move up to the next weight, which is 112. And remember, for the first four weights, we're in the double-A class starting out. And double-A at 112 pits Doug Titus of Carlisle, against Paul Wilkerson of Wapolo. We showed you Paul Wilkerson, who has an 86-match winning streak, but neither one of these men has lost this year. Well, it's going to be a great match. And of course, Paul Wilkerson being uh, wrestling for Wapolo, looking for his second state championship. 
A couple of years ago, he wrestled for Morning Sun, and then Morning Sun lost their high school. And we're going to see a couple of kids in a row, Paul Wilkerson and Tom Harbison, who's going to wrestle next for Wapolo, who used to wrestle for Morning Sun, and now they're leading Wapolo to a state championship. Wapolo has wrapped up the state championship for 2A. The coach by Willard Howell, who is has won already with this team, Wapolo, state championship. We asked him earlier what he what he was thinking about this uh, championship possibility. This is our first state championship, and, and uh, my I feel that uh, the kids have come up here and put it together and and done the job that, that we set out to do at the first of the season. We, we set a goal, and uh, it looks like we've reached that goal, and it's, it's going to be uh, quite fun to come out of here with that with that trophy the, for Southeast Iowa, not only for Wapo, but for, for the whole area. That's Willard Howell, and here we go with Paul Wilkerson against Doug Titus. Now, uh, Wilkerson is in the dark uniform, the blue, and Doug Titus of Carlisle is in the red uniform. Willard, Willard Howell, one of the pioneers of starting programs in small towns in Southeast Iowa. He's done a tremendous job there, and it's just a tribute to Wapolo and Southeast Iowa of this state championship. Then, of course, the coach from Carlisle, Bob Yelake, he's a former co-college wrestler, Bell Plain wrestler, and he was coach of the year this year. Look at Wilson, Wilkerson trying to horse his man over from that position. Well, I think it's important from Wilkerson's standpoint, going for a second title, that he really come out strong because you can get tentative sometimes. He Two. has the takedown. And on the other weight class, at the other uh, mass, on 1A, we have Peter Taft, undefeated from Mason City Newman, against Mark Schulze of Rock Valley. That's 1A. We'll keep an eye on that. At AAA, it's Council Bluffs tonight. Lewis Central's Jeff Bellows against Abraham Lincoln's Darren Coffey, who has won 80 straight matches and is a returning champion. As I was saying, Carlisle's coach, Bob Gielek, was named the 2A State Coach of the Year. And our congratulations to Bob and his fine program at Carlisle. Titus just got his first point. He is out after Wilkerson took, Wilkerson took him down. It's 2-1 to one in favor of Wilkerson, the man in the dark on the right. Now Titus has the front headlock position. Here he comes. He's trying to... You know, just outspin Paul Wilkerson in the situation. You've seen this many times if you're a wrestling fan. And he's doing a nice job, but Wilkerson is still faced off on him, and there are no Dude. points. There yeah, Titus the has length, see, and that's what's And he has a cradle on Yes, Wilkerson. that's a tough, that's really, really tight right there, too. So Titus of Carlisle trailing two, well, now tied two to two, has uh, has Wilkerson in a difficult position. Actually, three to two because he had, uh, Wilkerson had given up an escape also. We have 10 seconds to go in the period, and Wilkerson finally managed to break that cradle situation. Wilkerson placed fifth two years ago as a sophomore. He was a state champion, undefeated. There's Willard Howell, Wapolo head coach that we just heard from. Won over 200 matches. He's won 205 dual meets. Now these, the score is three to two in favor of, Will, of Titus. And I'll tell you, Wilkerson's gonna have his hands full tonight, obviously here. There's, there's Wilkerson. There's Paul Wilkerson, 40 and 0. And then we have Doug Titus, who's 35 wins and no losses. And these two have never met before. So it's, a, it's an interesting chance to see. Now Wilkerson's out quite quickly uh, with the less than 10 seconds gone in the second period. It's 3-3 and here we go again. Well, like I said, I think the wrestler here that really, truly opens up, gets past the nerves and opens up is the one that's gonna come out ahead. They go back to the center. The referee here is Dr. Bob McNeil, who was just given the award as the, as the uh, going into the Hall of Fame, the officials Hall of Fame. He's the head referee, at least in this situation. You know, I was talking to Willard Howell, the coach of Paul, just earlier, and he said, you know, of course, that John Siegel and Paul Wilkerson, Paul's dad, are going to be in his corner because they're also his coaches. They were his coaches in Morning Sun, and oh, they'll nice. be there tonight. So Willard's not even sitting in the corner tonight. Wilkerson worked on a knee tap. He was not able to make it go. He still has the front headlock against Titus. It's 3-3 here, but neither man has been able to score in the second period after the initial escape by Wilkerson. That's Titus on the left from Carlisle. 
35-0-1, getting into the finals against Paul Wilkerson, a defending champion. Well, the length of uh, Titus is a real advantage for him, and he knows how to use it, and he's, uh, he does a nice job of using that leverage. Again, see Wilkerson with that tough front headlock. Slow, Over here, son. And Robert McNeil right says that... Uh, right over there. Well, I think he, he spots, right here, uh, uh, I thought a cut over Wilkerson's eyebrow. I thought I saw it when they were sitting in the referee's position, and it must be a little bit worse. So we're going to take a look at that, and that gives uh, Doug Titus a chance with about 46 yeah, seconds to go in the right. second period here at 112 pounds to go over and get a little uh, coaching. That's Paul Wilkerson, um, his dad, Paul's dad, and I won't say senior because his grandpa's name's Paul also, and he's oh. here tonight. <laughs> Simplifies names. Everybody in the family has the same name. Here's Paul Wilkerson again with that underhook into a front headlock. But Titus is tough. He's a good, solid, stable wrestler, as you said, Tim. He uses that length extremely well. Well, he was here. third last year at 103, and Paul was the state champion at 103, but as you said, they hadn't met. Again, Wilkerson goes into the position against the head works the head very hard now here's it here's the oh, lane that's what i'm titus. talking about see he was able to get around big move by titus of carlisle and he has taken the lead five to three in the right at the three. end of the uh, tournament we talked so much about the advantage of getting points right at the end and he did it Hi, no one the third well it's doug titus with a two-point lead. Look at this length, he gets around. That was Paul's move at first, and Titus didn't give up on it. He went right after him and went around to the ankle, came around with his length and scored two. That's his second takedown. Look at determination right there. He starts underneath, leading by two. Wilkerson says, let him go. It's six to three. He's willing to give that move up. Well, I'd say Titus, with the look on his face, said, that's fine, Give me, do whatever you want. I'm coming after you. Six to three, a three-point lead and Wilkerson on the left in quest of a second state championship 86 wins in a row is in there trailing Titus of Carlisle That's Paul Wilkerson a senior has already said that he is going to wrestle for Here Jim Miller at Wartburg College next year both up looking forward to more years of wrestling and he'd like to get this state championship the second one pocketed but Titus has other ideas Titus now has the front headlock. He's in a good situation there. Now, he scored twice in this position by coming around behind Wilkerson, and he may be able to do it again. He did. With a minute and five to go, it's eight to three in favor of Titus, and he has the cradle locked up again. And Wilkerson who needs to make up five points in 50 seconds, is very happy to bring that one back to the center and get out of that cradle. There's Bob Gielik, coach of the year in 2A. Very good wrestler for Bell Plain and Coe College. Now a, doing a great job at Carlisle. Wilkerson gets to his feet, but couldn't stay there. Titus has done a fine job here. Well, right now, Paul Wilkerson needs a big move. A four-point to tie it, a five-point to win. It's not going to happen with a takedown. And Titus is doing the best thing he can do for defense, and that's create an offense of his own, making shots. 25 seconds to go. Titus of Carlisle leading Paul Wilkerson of Wapolo. Wapolo has already clinched the team championship in this division, 2A. Good aggressive moves by Titus. 15 seconds to go. Well, this is a big win for Titus, and uh, if he hangs on right here as a junior, he'll be looking for his second next year. And it looks like he's going to get it right here. Big win. And there it is. It's a victory for Doug Titus of Carlisle. He went through the year with one draw. You bet. And Paul Wilkerson loses for the first time in 86 matches. Boy, and it can happen here if it happens anywhere. The state tournament in Iowa, we see it every year, a streak like that stop. 112-pound champion Doug Titus, who's coach Bob Yelick. They're a happy group there with a big victory over uh, the star of the team championship in Wapolo. Now we're looking at the end of a 
a match in the 1A division. That was between Peter Taft and Mark Schultze. The He's winner there beat. was Schultze. Yeah, over. undefeated Peter Taft of Mason City Newman. Boy, they're falling all over the place, you know? I'll tell you, that's how tough it is. Yes, Peter Taft was the defending champion. Undefeated. And he lost. Let's go to the award stand now for the 103-pound top six. Sprague, Bondurant Ferrar. Fifth place, Todd Cuse, Edward Colesberg. Fifth, fourth place, Jake Probe, Tipton. Third place, Matt Brown, Wayne Corden. Runner-up, Travis Johannes, Montezuma. And the Class 1A 103-pound champion from Ogden, Jason Keenan. Like you said, that Ogden just started their wrestling program 13 years ago. And there's a freshman winning the state championship for him. And he... Got a lot of years left to go. That's nice. When you're a freshman, you win that state championship. The top six, he stands on the top step after defeating Travis Johannes of Montezuma tonight at 103 pounds. Now we're coming up on a stand with the double A. The class 2A 103 pound awards, Coach Larry Jackson of Huxley Bauer. Sixth place, Kelly Seary, New Hampton. Fifth place, Mitch Koonsman, Albia. Fourth place, Jeremy Bergren, Makokata. Third place, Jason Halupnik, Centerville. Runner-up, Mike Dennis, Iowa Falls. And the Class 2A 103-pound champion from Huxley Ballard, Chad Bennett. There's Chad. Did a great job to win. Coaches, the coach of the winner always presents the awards. And there's your chance, you know, we'll try to show you all the awards so that you can see the top six. You can see who went third, fourth, fifth, and sixth because we don't really have any other way of telling you. Now, Presenting we're at 103, three, 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 triple A. Coach Wes Creason of Indianola. Sixth place, Jason Anderson, Lewis Central Council Lux. Fifth place, Jason Osborne, Sioux City Healing. Fourth place, Eric Baker, Cedar Rapids Jefferson. Third place, Brian Beck, Fort Madison. Runner-up, Troy Yege, Pleasant Valley. 103-pound champion from Indianola, Eric Keller. Eric Keller, 40 wins without a loss this year, even though he has a black eye, he's the champion. Let's go to Dean Ford for a floor report. Doug, at 112 in Class A, we had two unbeatens. Peter Taft of Mason City Newman and Mark Schultz of Rock Valley. Taft is a senior who had been here at the state tournament three times. In that time, it only lost one match in state tournament. Mark Schultz had been here twice, but he had never gone higher than fourth. Tonight, Mark Schultz is the champion from Rock Valley. Three to nothing over Peter Taft of Mason City Newman. Mark Schultz, 17-year-old junior from Rock Valley, the champ. Dick? All right, Dean, at 112, Darren Kopik and Jeff Bellows, two wrestlers from Council Bluffs, did a repeat performance this year. It was Kopik winning again by the margin of 5-1 to one over the sophomore Bellows from Lewis Central. And there you see the redhead, an excited young man who is now winner two consecutive years. Now back to you, Doug. And we have so many, thank you, gentlemen, we have so many underclassmen showing their uh, in upsets already here in the first couple of weights, so we... See a lot of things in the future. Well, well, like this I... is 119 pounds, and we're a member of the first four weight classes. We're at Double A live from Veterans Auditorium, the High School Wrestling Championships. Aaron Grimes in the blue from West Union North Fayette against undefeated Brian Howell of Makokita, who is wrestling with the orange uniform. School colors of Makokita. This is Double A, and you see. The uh, red, the, 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 take red. the takedown there was uh, by Stay there. Howell ah. of Makokita. He leads two to nothing. Goes into the ride position over Grimes. Well, Howell from Makokita has had quite a tournament series. He has pinned his way through the sectionals, district, and every round in this state tournament, Doug. Sounds a little dangerous, I'll tell you. It's, it's two to one now. Grimes is out, but you can see the way Howell was riding down there. He was he was not thinking about uh, staying up on top. He was gonna. <laughs> he goes for the pin. Yeah, yeah, he goes for the pin. He was um, fifth 
at 119 two years ago and second, a runner-up right here, so he smelled it, you know? He smelled the state championship, he's been close, and now he really wants it. We're also keeping track of 1A, man. where Cedar Rapids LaSalle's Tony Milkoff hey, here now. is wrestling for the championship against the upset man, I guess some people would say, Juan Robles of Wilton, who beat Jesse Whitmer of Eagle Grove in the semifinals, and he also beat a fine wrestler from Lisbon, and he's been tough. At 3A, now you see things happening up there in the corner. And at 3A, we have Brent Paulson of Cedar Rapids Kennedy in the green on the left against Tom Smith of Dubuque Waller. That's the championship match at 3A. We'll keep track of that at 119. Our main match here for Working the, into the double center, A, into the center. it's Aaron Grimes trailing Bruce Howell two to one with 15 seconds to go in the first period. Both of these young men are seniors. And they're neither one another. Oh, left. there's that. Uh, shot by, no by, by no Grimes, points. and he didn't score. Or Howell, and he didn't score. Howell on the right. Break easy, fellas, second period. Come to the center. Green choice. Top, bottom, neutral, early curve. That's the end Top, of the first bottom, period, neutral. two to one, in favor Red of down. Howell. And Grimes, okay, at his choice, down. he takes Top, the down the position. He takes the down position. Trailing by one, let's see what happens. Powell cut him off real fast with the tight waist and the chop. Whoa, but Grimes gets to his feet and comes out, ties the score with a minute 50 to go in the second period. 2-2, two -two, Grimes and Howell. He's up right now, man. He's Both up, these young up, men plan to attend college up, next up, year and wrestle. Up, one of them says he thinks he's made up his mind. Aaron Grimes says, I think I'll wrestle for Loris. The Brian Howell says, I'm going somewhere, but I don't know where yet. Well, he's he's thinking, if I look good enough, I might go somewhere big, you know? I might. Well, an, an, an attempt at the heel pick, but Grimes did a nice job of warding him off and standing up and not allowing him in. We're in the second period, and it's 2-2, two -two, 119 pounds, double A. That's our the match we begin with. Double A through the 125 pound class. You know, again, for the second match in a row, we have contrast in physical styles, physic uh, the physical look. We have a compact, uh, shorter wrestler in Hal, and look at this length on Aaron Grimes, and that can create havoc for both wrestlers from each side. Now Hal goes into the, that Russian the tie up, the, the two middle. on one there, see if he can work something off that. Here. Work in the center now, work in the center. 50 seconds to go, second period. The official here is the official of the year for this year, Mark Bean of Iowa City. He's the man you hear talking to the wrestlers in this double A match, 119 pounds in Veterans Auditorium. On Iowa Public Television, with Tim Johnson and Dick Trotter and Dean Borg and lots of other people, I'm Doug Brown with the coverage live. Howell in the blue. There's the heel pick. Now Howell needs to uh, okay. pop out right there in the end. I should I misidentified him. Of course, Howell is in the orange Watch uniform, and he's the man way. who just made the takedown. Four to two. Use it or off it. Use it or off it. And he got it with just a few seconds left. I don't want to make Makoka the mad. That's red. That's their school colors. And yeah. It's a red, red singlet on them. Well, they keep track on the scoreboard now. Look at their ankles. You see there's one man in each match on any mat has a green ribbon. That's a strap they strap around. And the other man has the, has the red. And that's the way they keep track on the scoreboard. But the colors, oh, look at this. Grimes has Howell on his back. But, but it was it. no back points because the time ran out. Right. I'd like to have that back. Now. It's 4-4. And it, here's the replay right here. Hal on top, but Grimes just really reels around, they pivots say, Brown, I'm and catches him on his back. And I'll bet uh, Hal's happy the time ran out. He got himself got a little out of position there. Now, Howell, again, is on the underside of starting the third period. It's 4-4, and Grimes hasn't let him out yet. But Howell's turning in pretty well. It's a bar arm over the top by Grimes. He can't keep that, and Howell is out, now leads 5-4. Howell. Howell likes 
on the left. Yeah, he likes to tie up that Better head man. right there and keep Grimes' head down on the map. But Grimes doing a nice job and trailing 5-4 here. Oh, yeah. 5-4 in favor of the man on the left here on Iowa Public Television's coverage of the 1992 Wrestling Championship live from Des Moines. 119-pound weight class. Very seldom in high school, especially at a weight like this, do you see a young man go through his entire career, or at least three years of the career, at the same weight. And Brian Howell has been at 119 for three straight years, and he says it's about time that I win a state championship there. But Mr. Grimes is going to have a lot to say about it with 40 seconds left in the third period. Nice heel pick. This time it works. Howell manages to score. He goes into the advantage position and has built his lead to seven to four. One, neutral. Now Grimes is out. Two-point difference with 25 seconds to go. Here comes Howell. He got the two. Well, Howell says, fellas, I, 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 I think I've got it figured out right Good now. Good job. Off the back, man. He liked it on his feet there, and he scored two very crucial takedowns in the last 20 seconds. Look, a little Stay duck set, right now. there. Top, let's go. Comes under and just kind of drops down to the hips and gets the two points. This is the double-A class with 20 seconds to go. Iowa High School Wrestling Association rotation every three, it rotates every three years. And this year we're starting on, with the first Newton four weights in double-A. He's up, he's up, he's up. Then Dan one Green, after 125, we'll stay with the triple-A's up through 145. The next four weight classes will be 1A. And we'll probably start with the uh, triple-A at heavyweight because uh, Iowa City High School is in that and it might very well be, mean the team championship. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Here comes Howell. Oh, okay, man. Right. He's up. He's up. At the He's end, up. the match is over. It's 9 Come 6. On, Howell is the winner. Undefeated season. Shake hands, fellas. He beat Aaron Grimes. All the way around. 9 there to 6. Go. Nice job. Nothing to hang his head about, Mr. Grimes. He did a nice job against a tough Brian Howell from Makoka. A very big win that for him. Let's. Let's. Let's go to 1A, where Juan Robles, Ron Robles of Wilton, is on the left wearing the blue and he's riding tony milkoff with 18 seconds to go and leading seven to three robles came in here with only one loss in 45 46 matches and he has done a fine job in this tournament he's won a couple of big ones upsets he beat jesse whitmer a two-time champion from eagle grove who was upset last year a one-time champion and now who was upset last year and then he beat him again this year and he wins the championship, Robles does from Wilton. His coach, Steve Shirk, very excited. Juan Robles, a senior, did a nice job here. Did a good job. There he is, the champion from Wilton, Iowa, making his coach a happy man, too. Coach Shirk. Now, there's still some wrestling left to go with a minute and a half to go in the AAA match. So let's go over to the AAA match. A little injury timeout right now in the AAA match, and that has Brent Paulson from Kennedy leading 6-3 to three over Tom Smith from Dubuque Waller. And that looks like Mr. Smith right there with a cut. 6-3 to three is the score. The referee here, Michael Spade of, uh, of Bettendorf. And so we still have a little time to go. 119 pounds. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope you can stay with us here through much of the evening on our live coverage from Iowa Public Television of the sport that separates Iowa from a lot of other states to do it well here wrestling. And it also makes a great chance, as we say every year, for people at this weight, 119 pounds or 103 pounds, doesn't matter. You can be a state champion here. While we're waiting here, let's take a look at the standings in the 1A. Now, Lisbon, as you probably know, wrapped up the 1A championship on Friday. They came into the tournament expecting to win, and they definitely did. Well, we'll save that. There it is, there it is. Lisbon doing a real, real roll-up against the field here at 1A for new coach Chris Lembeck. Here, Brent Paulson going to work again against Tom Smith from Wallert. Paulson, of course, from Kennedy. And as we said, the score is 6-3 to three in favor of Paulson of Kennedy in the green uniform. 
They're out of bounds. Michael Spate sends him back to the center again. So one match left, one championship in the 119 pound level to be decided. It's the Triple A. Uh, a warning for Stalin. 6-3 in favor of Paulson on the left. Now, Smith in the blue is going to have to come up with something here in the last few seconds, 45 seconds to go. Well, Smith didn't top rank wrestler uh, much of this year, and he's a runner-up at this weight last year, the Wallet wrestler, and he's behind 6-3 right now, Brent Paulson and Kennedy. Paulson in on the leg. If he's ahead 6-3, that's, that's time. Even if he can't finish the takedown there, he's not going to be taken down in that position. Set him up again. Paulson on the left leading. Now here's Smith in on a single leg. Couldn't keep it. Paulson was third last year at this weight class, so we have the second and third ranked wrestler or the, from last year. Runner-up in the third. Paulson just called for stalling. And a point. One point. It's now 6-4. With 16 seconds and a takedown by Smith would put it in the sudden death overtime. But Smith made the shot. Or Paulson, Paulson, made, the Paulson made the shot. And that's, as Tim said a while ago in another context, that's a good defense, that offense. And time ran out. Paulson kept his lead by making the shot at the end when he had to do it. Even though he couldn't score, he kept Smith from attacking him. And Paulson of Cedar Rapids Kennedy wins 6-4 and become the state champion. The state champion for Kennedy, Coach Rick Blackwell, Randy Firehelm. They've got to be real excited. There they are greeting Brent Paulson, state champion for Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Let's go to the awards at 112 pounds. Karen Hellman, Gilbertville Don Bosco. Fourth place, Lee Hoger, Cedar Rapids LaSalle. Third place, Ron McNichols, Lennox. Runner-up, Peter Taft, Mason City, Newman. And the 112-pound 1A champion from Rock Valley, Mark Schultz. Congratulations to Mark Schultz, 112-pound champion in the 1A division. The young men going up on the stand now are from the middle-sized schools, the 2As. Coach Bob Yalek of Carlisle. Sixth place, Sean Harlan, Clear Lake. Fifth place, Chad Tunick, Perry. Fourth place, Will Smith, NCNK. Third place, Paul Deleuze, Laporte City Union. Runner up, Paul Wilkerson, Wapalo. And the 2A 112 pound champion from Carlisle, Doug Titus. He looked terrific tonight, beating. Breaking Paul Wilkerson's 86 match winning streak and becoming a state champion. Now up on the stand, the Triple A's, the, the larger schools, champions at 112. Presenting the 3A awards, Coach Clark Allen, Council Bluffs Abe Lincoln. Sixth place, Matt Ryle, Fort Dodge. Fifth place, Alondo, Alonzo Henderson, Waterloo East. Fourth place, Shane Paulus, Sioux City North. Third place, Jason Deary, West Des Moines Dowling. Runner-up, Jeff Bellows, Lewis Central Council Bluffs. And the 112-pound 3A champion from Council Bluffs, Abe Lincoln, Darren Kopik. Hey, two-time champion there, Darren Kopik. Now let's go to Dean Borg for a floor report. Doug at 119 pounds in Class A, Juan Robles, an 18-year-old senior from Wilton, had never been to a state tournament before, but tonight he did it in a big way. 7-3 decision over Tony Milkoff of Cedar Rapids, LaSalle. Cut the takedown and uh, five near fall points in the second and third periods, and he gave his coach a big birthday present, Steve Shirk, Wilton, birthday today. Juan Robles won a state championship for him. Doug? They say, uh, as they say, tournament champions are the are people who win tournaments. He'd never been here before, but he's one of those fellows who just walks in and says, I win. He beats people, and he beats good people. 
Now we're at 125. We're staying with the double A's through 125 pounds. And here we have Tom Harbison, again, one of the Wapolo state championship team that has already clinched. And Dusty Rhodes of Osage on the left there in the green, undefeated, is his opponent. Coached by Bruce Gast. Dusty Rhodes, 35 and 0 with 21 pins. Harbison, 41 and 4. And um, Dusty Rhodes been the state tournament before, Doug. This is his fourth or his third trip. At 103, he came and two years ago, and, la and last year he was third at 119. Also at the 125 level in the 1A division, as you see uh, Rhodes come in on a single leg, Dan Gabrielson of Belmont Clemmy is wrestling Ike Light of Lisbon. And uh, Light is going for his third championship. Then in the AAA division, oh, this is uh, Jeff McGinnis's night. He's, some people think, uh, one of the best wrestlers we've had in a while. 42-0 from City High, trying to win a state championship, and we'll watch that one because City High is trying to win a title. They need a match. They need a big win from McGinnis, and Proctor is against him. Cedar Rapids Prairie's Jason Proctor, 27 and six, coached by Jim Kimball. But we're beginning with double A, according to our Iowa High School Athletic Association rotation system, and Dusty Rhodes in the green is wrestling Tom Harbison of Waterloo in the darker uniform, the blue, on the left. Front headlock for Dusty Rhodes, Rhodes from Osage gets two points. Well, he hasn't called it yet. There he is. Doesn't have it quite yet, does he? Well, now he does, 2-0. Two, uh, two, two Referee here is Tim Fowler of Cedar Rapids. You know, an interesting point here, 27 years ago, Al Baxter what won the state it? championship the Morning Sun. One of his teammates, who, who was a state place winner, was Tom Harbison's dad, Tom Harbison, for Morning Sun also. So, runs in the family and... What is this Morning Sun business? All these people from Morning Sun here. Well, you know, they had a good class come through and, and uh, just the tradition runs. You don't have to have a high school, I guess, to continue to love wrestling in that little town. That's like a lot of small towns in Iowa. I think... Small well, town you. wrestling in Iowa is um, something that uh, Iowans can be proud of. Well, if you're watching and you're wondering why I'm being such a smart guy here, it's because Tim Johnson also is from Morning Sun. Well, I just tell him I'm from where Al Baxter's from. <laughs> <laughs> Two to one in favor of Dusty Rhodes there on top. We have a minute 40 to go in the second period. 125-pound state championship match in the 2A division. Talk about tradition. I don't think there's any finer than Osage. No. You know, my goodness. What Gerald the, Lehman. Oh, those yeah. people up there, I'll tell you. They know how to wrestle. Talk about, uh, they've done it for a long time, as long as anybody in the state, and as well as anybody. And this is what great wrestler from there, on. Dusty Rhodes, having himself a fine season. Center, no Nothing happened there, so Tim Fowler yeah. will bring him back to the center from the out of bounds. Two to one score in favor of Rhodes, who will start on top in this ref uh, referee's position here with a minute and 11 to go. Second period. Yeah, the assistant now. referee up there on the edge, you see in the left hand corner of your screen, is Bob McNeil, one of the officials Hall of Fame earlier tonight. Out of bounds, out of bounds, okay. out of bounds again. This is Wapolo's first state championship in any sport in the, in, in, that they've ever had in the school. As a team. As a team. But they don't have a state individual champion yet tonight because Paul Wilkerson was upset. Well, I don't know if he's, uh, I'd say his opponent might say it wasn't an upset, but he was defeated after 86 straight wins by Titus. Rhodes doing a nice job of... Uh, right now, he's throwing the half on uh, Harbison there. He's doing a nice job of riding, keeping Harbison flat on the mat, riding that near and far wrist, rotating Man, back and forth. Now, Harbison's been warned Not on the yet. bottom. Yep. 25 seconds to go in the first period. 125-pound double up A. In there. Second period, I'm sorry. Watch your angle. Still only two to one. Up the arm, up the arm. Still just two to one. Time's gonna run out here, Stop. and it does. 
in between periods Three. here Three. in the 2A match. Yeah. Let's take a look at 1A. Here, here is Ike Light against Dan Gabrielson, and the score here is 4-4. Four, four. Ike Light going for a three-time championship. He's the man on the left, and it's 4-4. Four, four. We'll keep track of it. They're going into the third period as well. And there's and McGinnis that's a, in the and that's red. McGinnis in the red, and the score there is 11-3. Not uh, surprising, McGinnis undefeated in high school. One, one, two, in our main match, in the center there, it's Dusty Rhodes three and Harbison one. Uh, Rhodes started in the, in the second period down, third period down, and got out. Now Harbison needs two points somewhere with a minute and a half to go. Harbison in the blue Circle. on the left against Rhodes of Osage, 125, 2A. Clock ticket. Rhodes staying in the middle right there. Took a little shot there. Now, Harbison's the one that's going to have to get on the attack here. He's the one that needs the points, and he's in on a single, but Rhodes does a nice job of hipping out. Okay, stalemate. Green, you got to go to work. Off it, Green. Tim Fowler sets him up again in the center. Referee Tim Fowler. It's a two-point difference here. Rhodes is a takedown ahead of Tom Harbison on the left. Harbison was fifth at 112 two years ago and was a qualifier last year. He has 20 pins this year. Rhodes has 21. They both know how to put their opponents back to the mat. Rhodes in the green. 40 seconds to go. Harbison now pushing. Now, okay. If uh, Rhodes doesn't step forward, he's going to get warned for stalling himself. Harbison has a warning. Well, he almost butted heads that time, and Rhodes has a single leg. Has the single leg in a good, solid position here with 25 seconds to go. He'd love to finish it. For the oh, he didn't. Oh, he yep, lost yep, his yep, position yep, there. Yep, yep, yep. He lost his position, and Harbison's trying to, to take him down, and he did. There with 13 seconds, seconds to go. And he's trying to turn him right here with a splato type thing situation. Go in, go in. 6-5, we'll count it for this you. It's going to be sudden death. 3, 2, 1, and they're going to oh, go sudden death. Here, boy. You know, what's exciting sudden about death. this is that the fans can see sudden right death here, in action because this is the way it should be. We've got 3, 3, sudden now, death. Now, if they do, they have, a two, they have a two minute period, and whoever scores first wins. In this replay right here, Harbison was able to use his length, get his hips in there, hook in with the legs, and get the two points. Now, let's go back to live action. 10 seconds to go. Harbison's heel pick was not quite there. Rhodes of Osage in this overtime, 3-3 against Harbison of Wapolo. Low single by Rhodes, he tried to no, shit no, that no, twice no, no, and he no. missed it, lost his position. And here's Harbison going for the takedown. What happened? Rhodes came right, up right, with right. it. Yeah, Harbison was in for a cradle. He's hit on the hips, and Rhodes is able to capitalize it. Great match. Go right here. No caution there in that overtime. That was a big win for Dusty Rhodes over Tom Harbison of Wapolo. An undefeated season and a victory of 125 pounds. But right here, right here, Harbison, if he just slips around, would have had it, but Rhodes did a nice job of dumping down and keeping control and getting the two points. Nice win and an undefeated season for Dusty Rhodes from Osage. And our first overtime here, let's go to McGinnis's match at the AAA. We this have, wins it, well, actually, that has just ended. The score 17 to five in favor of McGinnis of Iowa City, still undefeated in high school, 43 and zero this year. And Ike Light beat Dan Gabrielson, by the way, for his third championship. The score there was 9-6, to six, I believe. Let's get the awards now. 1A, 119. Third place, Jesse Whitmer, Eagle Grove. Runner-up, Tony Milkoff, Cedar Rapids LaSalle. And the 1A, 119-pound champion from Wilton, Juan Robles. Sorry we missed the first uh, two or three there, but congratulations to Juan Robles. What a tournament he had. Some good people on that stand with him, but he's at the top. Now let's see the 2A 119-pound top six. Jeff Pampere of Makokata. 
Sixth place, Darren Wallace, Albia. Fifth place, Jay Schaefer, Wapolo. Fourth place, Matt Fox, Dallas Center Grimes. Third place, David Morgan, New Hampton. Runner-up, Aaron Grimes, West Union, North Fayette. And the 2A 119-pound champion from Akokata, Brian Howell. Congratulations to Brian. Numero uno at uh, 2A 119. Now the 3As are coming up. 119-pound class. We've just finished the 125 wrestling, and we're going to go to 130. We'll be with the 3As for a while. Assistant coach Denny Burke of Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Sixth place, Corey Kammerer, Pleasant Valley. Fifth place, Chris Deegan, West Des Moines Dowling. Fourth place, DJ Walton, Council Bluffs AL. Third place, Zach Geary, Cedar Falls. Runner up, Tom Smith, Dubuque Waller. And the 3A 119 pound champion from Cedar Rapids Kennedy, Brent Paulson. Congratulations, Mr. Paulson, 3A champion. Dean Borg, let's hear from you. Well, Doug, you were right. Ike Light, who was a champ last year at 112, repeated tonight, this time at 125 in Class A. Wasn't a cakewalk, though, with Dan Gabrielson of Belmont Clemming. Light was behind two to nothing after the first period, tied at 4-4 after the second, and then the series of escapes and takedowns won 9-6 decision. Ike Light, the champ at 125 in Class A. Dick. All right, Dean, Jeff McGinnis of Iowa City, City High, didn't get his 33rd pin this year, but no need. He wins 17-5, to amassing seven takedowns. Well, there you see one of them defeating Jason Proctor of Cedar Rapids Prairie. Once in a decade comes a wrestler with the skills of a Jeff McGinnis, only a junior. He'll be back to go for four next year. Back to you, Doug. Thank you, Dick Trotter well, and Dean Borg. Now we're going to go to 3A for the next four weights, 130, 135, 140, and 145. And a triple A at 130, fighting for a championship. Two fine wrestlers, Mark Ironside of Cedar Rapids Jefferson, coached by Dick Briggs, and Courtney Anderson of Fort Dodge, coached by Ed Birnbaum. Now they both have dark uniforms, so let's separate them here somehow. The man in the orange knee pad is Courtney Anderson of Fort Dodge. And Ironside of Cedar Rapids Jefferson on the left there, actually in the lighter blue and black against the blue in the uniforms. They've wrestled before, and this will be interesting because Ironside defeated Courtney Anderson 14 to five earlier this year in the Ames Invitational. Now in other matches at 1A, 130, we have Josh Jones of Lisbon battling Matt Kiger of Audubon for the state title. And there's the trip of double-A matches, Washington's Matt Gonchorowski, who is undefeated. His opponent is Chad Benz of North Central Northwood, Kensett. So we're in triple-A for the 130 through 145 pound weight classes. Man. No score here. Ironside in on a single leg, but Courtney Anderson trying to whizzer and flatten him out. But here comes Ironside. This is what you need to do. When you're in on the single, single, you have to adjust and then come up, bring your hips underneath you, and that's what he's trying now. Sucking it in. He's got his hips underneath him, but Anderson, nice job. Of well, we had a, we were talking about a possible pin down in 1A, but they're out of the pin situation now because the uh, man is actually face down on the mat instead of face up. But here we are at AAA again, no score. Courtney Anderson on the right. The official here is Robert Bream of Coralville. See, that right there, that's, Ironside. A, that's a mistake because Ironside got the two, but it's not freestyle Yo, here. And you can't just throw a, uh, a, a, a move right here because you don't get called out. back up for a slip like they do in freestyle. You gotta gain control, and therefore Ironside was able to get the two oh, points. Come back to the center again. This is uh, Robert Set. Bream of Coralville, the referee. You hear him talking. Score That's Dick Briggs on the top there, coach of Mark Ironside. And his wrestler starts in the top position with just seconds to go in the first period. Did a good job. He held on through the end of the period. It's 2 nothing. 
We're going to look at the team Fourth standings three, here for AAA. Cedar Falls leads, Falls leads, but that McGinnis down. win put City High within Set. three points. So, Go green. it's a matter of who wins. If, if Iowa City wins one of its two remaining Are matches, they win the 3A championship. If Cedar Falls wrestler doesn't win his, Cedar That's Falls right. still has a wrestler in. That's right. Cedar Falls still has a wrestler in, so we're keeping our eye on that 3A score. Three to nothing now in favor of Mark Ironside in the blue on the left there against Courtney Anderson. Again, he's wearing the orange knee pads for Dodge. Good tussle. They like to see Ironside likes to get in there and go upper body. He likes to go chest to chest, and now he's got the front headlock. Sticking Stick in the head, head here. Here he comes. Stick the head in there. Try to walk around. Fred's got two. And he got his second takedown. He now leads 5-0. Last year, Mark Ironside was third as a sophomore at 125. He's only a junior this year. Won 30 matches and only lost once. And that loss was to Jeff McGinnis, who came up in the dual meet, went up a weight class, and defeated him. Mark Ironside also has some honors in his off-season wrestling. He was fourth in the nation last year in the Greco-Roman Cadet Junior Nationals and fifth in the nation in freestyle cadets. Work the falls, go, man. Ironside has controlled Anderson very well here. He's leading 5-0. And Anderson's having real trouble getting started on the bottom here. Anderson now, yeah, Ironside, with a lot of confidence, goes right out in front of the head. Well, he really likes, look at this, he's got the chin and the arm. Trying to horse him over here. He's drive him over. Drive How much time does he have? Not enough. Uh, I have a feeling Courtney Anderson's he's felt this before with Mark and, uh, Ironside earlier well, in the year. That's the end of the second period. We're going to go to third period now, 5 nothing. There's Ed Birnbaum from Fort Dodge, former Fort Dodge wrestler in his third year as a head coach there. He was an assistant there from 1986 to 89. He likes his alma mater. Anderson again, sticks that arm in there, goes hard at it. He's leading 5-0. Tight waist. Looking for a way to turn his man over. There he likes to come ball. out there. You know, we see some wrestlers that, you know, just Mark aren't Ironside. afraid at all to come out. And this Mark Ironside really likes to come out in the front, put the pressure on. Well, when we asked him what his favorite move was, he said the Brands Armbar. And there we're looking at it right now. And this is where you've got to catch the chin. And oh, right here, Courtney drops. Anderson did what you need to do. You have to keep your base and come up with him. You can't lay flat or you're dead. Five to one now. That's the first point for Anderson. And here's Anderson with the front head lock, but he's not able to make anything out of this. He has about a minute to get, get back in this match. Oh, nice snap Stop down and spin around by Mark Ironside. He now leads seven to one. He's going to work Careful, man, on top again with a lot of savvy and a lot of energy. Keep your right shoe tied up. Look at this snap. Head to the mat, and then just, he did a little short drag, posted the arm, and came around. Courtney Anderson was not able he to get his arm up to stop him. Like that. There's Courtney Anderson right there, because Mark Ironside had posted it and made sure he wouldn't let it. Ready? Came around for the two. And he likes to be on his Ready? feet. You can tell that. Mark Ironside likes to be on his feet. He likes to work inside. He let Courtney Anderson go. It's seven to two. He'll give up the point, because he feels very comfortable up here. 45 seconds to go in this match, 130-pound 3A championship live from Veterans Auditorium in Des Moines with Tim Anderson, with Tim Johnson. What am I thinking about? Courtney Anderson is on the mat here. Tim Johnson, I'm Doug Brown, and Dick Trotter and Dean Borg are with us. We're keeping an eye on the matches that we're not able to bring you. Real tough to show three matches at one time. It's just not a good choice, we've found over the years. They go back to the center again. 13 Four seconds to, seven to go. Seven to two. Not much 
much time left. And there it is. It's seven to two in but favor of Mark nothing. Ironside of Cedar Rapids Jefferson. Congratulations to coach Dick Briggs. Boy, Mark. We're going to number the mat for the 2A wrestlers now at this same weight class, 130 pounds, because it's still going. 20 seconds to go. We have Gonchorowski undefeated from Washington, leading Chad Vins 7 2. And uh, the uh, he's the man in the black. You see Chad Vins trying to come back by going on a duck under or something, trying to make, make something happen. He had to take some chances, but Gonchorowski now. Scores on him again, goes up nine to two. Well, Gonchorowski is finishing off a perfect season. He'll be 38 and oh. What a big championship for him. Washington, Coach Tim Ball Vans. Great career for Matt Gonchorowski, who was third last year and now a champion. And Josh Jones of Lisbon lost in the A. We'll hear about that in just a moment. Let's see the awards now from 125 pounds, one A. Third place, Nick Yellick, Bell Plain. Runner-up, Dan Gabrielson, Belmont Plenty. And the champion, 1A, 125-pound champion from Lisbon, Mike Light. Mike Light. Lights seem to be uh, favor that top rung. There have been a lot of lights up high. State tournaments at the Veterans Auditorium. Well, in that particular family, there's been eight state championships. Coach Bruce Gass of Osage. Sixth place, Nathan Snyder, Brooklyn BGM. Fifth place, Steve Wilbur, Storm Lake. Fourth place, Don Even, Wapsie Valley Fairbank. Third place, Brad Canoyer, Carson, Macedonia. Runner-up, Tom Harbison, Wapolo. And the 2A 125-pound champion from Osage, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Roads, uh, great wrestling town, Osage. That's at uh, 125, 2A. Photographers get a shot, good snap there, and now up come the top six in this year's wrestling tournament at the 3A school size. awards. Coach Brad Smith of Iowa City, City High. Sixth place, Rob Martin, Cedar Rapids, Kennedy. Fifth place, Jerry Vasey, Pleasant Valley. Fourth place, Bay Bowie, Indianola. Third place, Joe Crum, Cedar Falls. Runner-up, Jason Proctor, Cedar Rapids Prairie. 125 3A champion from Iowa City City High, Jeff McGinnis. And with the potential of becoming a four-time champion. And let's go to Dean Borg. Doug in Class A at 130 pounds. There you see a straight-A student, Matt Kiger from Audubon, jumping into the arms of his coach. In the last 10 seconds, he scored an escape from Josh Jones, who had defeated him last year at the state tournament. And he defeated Jones tonight, 4-3. to three. Matt Kiger of Audubon is the champion at 130 pounds. Dick? All right, Dean, at 130 in double-A, we had Matt Gonsarowski. He was third in 90, third in 91, and first this year as he defeats a junior, Chad Vens from North Central Northwood, Kensett, by the margin of 9-2. to two. And there you saw with the ease of Gonsarowski in his match over Chad Vens. Now back to you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you, Dick Trotter and Dean Borg. Now we're still at triple-A level through 145 pounds. The next class is 135. And here we have our first look at a Dowling wrestler, West Des Moines Dowling's Chris Coppola, going for a state championship against an undefeated wrestler from Charles City, and this is Chad Vance. Earlier in the year, they had a great match, and I'll talk about that in a little while. Now, the uh, Dowling wrestler's in the purple on the left, the maroon, I should say, and the Charles City wrestler in black with the white knee pads, Chad Vance on the right. Two, two, and two, the periods. Two minutes each period. Referee is Tim Bayer, Tim Bayer of Greenfield. In there. 
Earlier this year, it was 17-13 in favor of Vance in the Charles City Duels, <laughs> and it was the key match. That 17-13 win was the match that really led Charles City to breaking that big dual meet uh, string of That's balance. That's right. That long string. Well, the 1A, Chad Ryan of Underwood is wrestling for the title against Tom Davis of Onawa, West Monona. And that's happening up on 1A. And in fact, what you're seeing is at 2A there. That's Corey Christensen undefeated against Brian Kiermeister of West Liberty. And uh, Christensen, a, uh, Christensen has his man on his back, so we'll keep it up there just for a second and see what happens. He's defending state champion. His dad, Gary Christensen, is coach. And there's a few... Uh, is a pitter-patter of the heart right now in Coach Christensen's corner. Our main match, of course, is Corey Christensen against Brian Thurmeister, but we're watching this uh, near fall up at number two. It's a shot, know, man. Or rather, I should say Chris Capola against Chad Vance. We're watching Christensen against right. Thurmeister here in the corner. Thurmeister is able to get off his back. Big okay. start for Christensen. So that was a five-point move. Now you're seeing Chris Capola take a shot at Chad Vance's leg. And look at that length again. That length is going to keep, no. it's going to save Vance from getting taken down. And he was able to reach back with all that length. That was a nice shot by Coppola, but to no avail. Reach back, keep his hips in it, and maintain the position. Two to nothing is no score here. Zero, zero. Strong green. There's a whistle against. Chad Vance, the official Tim Byer says you need to be working a little harder here, Mr. Vance. Next time that might happen, it would be a point against, uh, be a point for, for Coppola in the maroon on the left. Last year, Chris Coppola qualified, but did not place at 130 pounds for Dowling in the state tournament. Chad Vance also did for Charles City. 23 pins for Chad Vance. 36-0 record. And that 23 pins is a school record for Charles City. Talk about another great tradition. Charles City up against a great tradition, Des Moines Dowling. Red deferred. That's the end of the first period. Coppola deferred. Dan Pavlovich is telling Chad Vance, uh, giving him an idea about what he wants him to do. When he gets his choice, he takes down. You're here. Yeah. There he is. That, that dual meet Cover. victory by Charles City earlier this year ended a 134 dual meet string. Went 134 straight wins by Dowling. Come back to the center again. Just use six seconds there. That's Coppola. Of course, Chris Coppola's coach is Ron Gray, the longtime assistant okay. who wrestled at Dowling under Bob Dara and then was his assistant and now has taken over and they've won three straight championships going into this year. Vance has a whizzer in there and he's going to be out here in just a second, I suspect. Oh, here comes uh, Coppola to lock up the hey, bear hug and that going chest to chest saved the position for him. He felt confident in there, so when they went out of bounds, they were still in the same position they had when they started, and no score either way. Coppola in the position of advantage. Tight waist. Vance is uh, able to stand, but he hasn't been able to get out. We're in the second period, 25 seconds gone. Speaking of Ron Gray, the coach of Dallian, it's always neat to see a former wrestler at a school come back as their coach. And Ron Gray was Dowling's first collegiate All-American, and now he's back at his school. And we see that every once in a while, Doug. And mm -hmm. Shoe tie time for Coppola. It's upset. Dan Pavlovich, Charles City head coach, he's the one, he's the host of the All-Star Meet. He does a nice job up there every year, Charles City, and they ought to be commended for the hosting job they do for the state All-Star Meet for the last several years. A lot of volunteer help goes into it. They got a great booster club, and they do a fine job in Charles City. No score here. We're in the second period with a minute and 13 seconds to go. Vance sets up again on the mat. Tim Byer is going to... 
Blow the whistle, and here comes Coppola at him. 0-0. Zero, zero. Here's a stalling call. It's the other way against Coppola. Right. Now they both got warnings. Right. On a 0-0 zero, zero match, that's important. Because the next time somebody's called for inactivity, it's a point, and they haven't been able to get points in any other way yet. Coppola in there strong. Yeah. You, uh, you see the college wrestling series and uh, maybe not see as much high school wrestling as you think. There's Ron Gray. There's, there's Ron Gray. Gray. Of Dowling. You'll notice that there is no such thing as writing time in high school wrestling. You can be on top forever and it doesn't get you and get you points. You have to do something up there. And still no escapes, no takedowns. There's the first point of the match. Chad Vance is out with 42 seconds to go in the second period at 135. AAA live from Veterans Auditorium in Des Moines. Cabola got here by having a big win over Jamal Fox from Waterloo West. Seconds. There's Dan Pavlovich, Pardon? Charles City head coach. Pardon? His... We're neutral. Let's go. What a nice job for the Comets. Assistant coach also for Charles City before he took over the head job. And then a Chad oh, Vance. Good a shot there by Vance. No. But he was not able to score. Uh, Coppola had a right had the uh, position enough to turn it on him, face him up. There's Vance trying to come around the way we saw earlier. Length taking advantage of uh, his stretch. And now all he has to do, yeah, nice job. He cut yeah. across a little bit and got the two. He was out in the center of the mat. He knew he, could, he had position to work that move, and he took it patiently. With 10 seconds to go, he now leads three to nothing over Coppola of oh, Dallas. Good. Going into the last period there. Three to one now after the escape. Two seconds, man. They both know how to wrestle and win yes. close matches. Here's the takedown right here. You can see he's posting the arm too, coming around, getting behind, now dropping down to the single leg, has the single, and you're gonna see him cut across a little bit. There he is, Ready? cutting across, has that low ankle right now. Nowhere for seconds, Coppola man. to go, but down. Three to one. Vance came into the championship match tonight with a overtime decision over Chad Stecker Great from choice. Boone. He knows how to win Great close matches. Down. Two periods are gone. We have two minutes left to go. And the man in the under position, the bottom position, the referee's position here, Chris Coppola, has to make up two points against Chad, Chad Vance of Charles City. Nobody's beaten Vance this year. Two on one ride. You'll see him putting two hands on the same arm of Vance and controlling him that way. And the referee, Tim Byer, says, use it. You don't just keep it, you use it. That's Vance. Capola did not want to make a quick move. He sets himself up. And Vance brings him right back to the mat again. Leading 3-1. Look at he's riding that wrist right there, using his length, going back into the leg area. Stalling green, one red. And what the referee is saying, that's a point, is that you're not trying to turn Coppola. He's yeah. telling Vance he's not trying to turn Coppola. You have the responsibility on top to not only ride, but to try to turn your opponent. And if in the judgment yeah. of the referee, you aren't, you Who's get called for stalling. So with a minute and 15 out. seconds now, that's it's three to two. And that man, Chris Coppola, Power. has a chance. If he can escape, he ties it. If he can reverse, he goes ahead. But he hasn't been able to escape here. Well, he's up Back to his feet mat. now, but he isn't able to get that hand control. Vance on him like a leech. Chad Vance undefeated in 36 goes. That. Vance sets up again. This is uh, Vance setting up on top. 
Capola's on his feet, but let's see what he can do. Can he? Stone Green, one red. Now there now is three, uh, three. There's that's Chad Vance's Ten. penalty again. The official says that Vance was guilty of inactivity, and that now ties the score with penalties. 3-3 three, three, with 50 seconds to go, and if Capola gets out, he's ahead. On the mat. I know the officials don't like to get in the match that much. You're down. Well, you know, there's a young You're man down. right there, Chad Vance, really is in a difficult situation because right now he could figure if he rides, he may, there's the, uh, Coach Pavlovich, He's trying to turn him, but if he rides, there's a good chance he's going to get called for stalling if right. he doesn't turn him, and that would lose the match. Next time it'd be two points. Here's Coppola two coming reversal. around for a reversal. He's got it. He has it. Coppola now comes from behind, leading 5-3 with 30 seconds to go. Easy. Out of bounds. 28 seconds here. In 2A, Corey Christensen has won his second state title against Brian Furmeister from West Liberty. See that reversal yeah. here. Six. Good switch by Capola. Came right out. So now Capola's protecting the lead with 26 Two seconds to go. And a reversal for Bass. Nine. You're here, you're down. And it's 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five with 22 seconds left. Boy, what do you do here? Vance, what's wrong? It's not 17-13, but it's just as exciting. I'm bad. I'll tell you, 5-5 five, five in the state championship, 22 seconds left. Time here for a second. We come back out to the center again with a 5-5 five, five score Let's now. Go. Five, five. The point here is that Vance so hard, is in the advantage position. He's on top. He can't just hang on or he loses the match by stalling, possibly. But he can't let him go. And he can't let him go or he loses because there isn't very much time no. to take him back down again. No, he's got Let's to see what happens. Down the mat! Down the mat! Let's see. 15 seconds. 14. 12. Uh, we got to let the wrestlers decide this one right here. Six. Five. All right, it's looking more and more like overtime. Yep. Out of bounds with one second to go. And actually, the clock went to zero. And let's call it. There we go. Zero. We're going to have an overtime. Chris Capola against Chad Vance. Those tuning in this year, they used a one-minute rest in between the overtime. We don't get it. We go right now. Yep. Stay right in there. Get in there. You got yourself ready to go six minutes. Now you go a little more. That's Vance of Charles City on the left. Like I said, Vance advanced to the finals by winning in overtime last night in the semifinals. Good overtime. 3A at 135 pounds. Out of bounds. It's the only match still going in the 135 pound class. As you might expect in overtime. Vance's low single failed, and now Coppola's in on the single leg. Can he score? He does. He wins the title. He wins it. Dowling wins it. Turns around a loss earlier in the year. Coach Gray, a happy camper. Let's go, guys. An overtime victory and a takedown by Chris Coppola. 7-5 over Chad Vance. That spoils Vance's undefeated season. And Coppola wins the state title. Here are the awards now. Let's take a look first at what happened. Single leg right in here. Dowling has it in real tight. Just drives, keeps his uh, head right there, driving forward, gets a two point. Happy camper, I'll tell you. Now Fifth we're going to show you the awards at 131A. Fourth place, Joe Forcine, New London. Third place, Clay Hall, Anita. Runner-up, Josh Jones, Lisbon. And the 1A 130-pound champion from Audubon, Matt Kiger. Matt Kiger. He beat one of the state champion Lisbon teams, wrestler Josh Jones, to win the title. Here are the standings. And boy, Lisbon made a big thing of it here. 132 points against the field. They had more points than the next two teams put together. Tim Balvans of Washington. Sixth place, Troy Friedrich, Algona. Fifth place, Brian Gray, Truro, I-35. 
Fourth place, Brock Wilson, Wapolo. Third place, Kyle Curtis, Sheraton. Runner-up, Chad Benz, NCNK. And the 2A 130-pound champion from Washington, Matt Gonsarowski. And that's an undefeated season for Matt. In the 2A, in the 2A championships here, that's how it stands. Wapolo wins it. So winner set by, by the way, has moved up now to a uh, fifth place tie would be Cora with 46. So that, that uh, is a, quite a race for third. Sixth place, Mike Moore, Marshalltown. Fifth place, Bryce Odson, Ankeny. Fourth place, John Tornberg, West Des Moines Valley. Third place, Wade Anderson, Waterloo West. Runner up, Courtney Anderson, Fort Dodge. And the 3A 130 pound champion from Cedar Rapid Jefferson, Mark Ironside. Congratulations to Mark Ironside, Triple A champion at 130. And here's Dean Board with a floor report. Doug, it came down oh, in three, class A at 135 pounds forward. to the last uh, 20 seconds. And that's when Tom Davis scored of uh, West Monona scored an escape from Chad Ryan of Underwood and set him leaping into his coach's arms, the new champion at 135 class A, Tom Davis of West Monona. Dick. All right, Dean, at 135 pounds, Corey Christensen did it. His dad said he won his second consecutive title tonight as he defeats Brian Furmeister of West Liberty 8-2. to two. two in a row for Corey Christensen under his father, Gary. Now back to you, Doug. We wanted to put up the AAA uh, team standings there, and we are in the AAA class at 140 pounds, and we want to show them to you because it's very important for City High and Cedar Falls both in the next weights. It's Cedar Falls by three points. They have one wrestler left to go. City High has two. So we'll watch that one carefully to see who carries away the team championship at AAA. Now we're at 140 pounds. AAA, Terry Vaughn of City, Iowa City West. On the left in the green uniform, green and yellow. And Dan Lovell of Marshalltown is his opponent, coached by Phil Henning. Marshalltown in the orange, trimmed with blue. Well, we've seen a lot of levels for Marshalltown over the years. In fact, he's one of four brothers, and they've never won a state championship at Marshalltown, and everybody's here, and it's a big match for the family. The last eight years, they've, we've seen levels at the state tournament for Marshalltown. <laughs> at 1-8, in the same weight class, 140 pounds, Brian Fulman of Anita wrestles Mike Whiting of West Sioux from Haywarden, coached by Rod Earlywine, who was a wrestler at Drake, as you remember, and uh, the double-A division, Mike Wentworth's team, Parkersburg, represented by Lee Klinkenborg against undefeated Dan Sperry of Independence, 38-0 this year. The single-leg pickup taken by Terry Vaughn of Iowa City West. Now he has to finish this for a takedown if he can. Goes up high. Whizzer by Lovell is, is what's keeping him out of that. Overhook, you see, with the, with the arm. Couldn't keep it, though. Vaughn has to take him to the mat. Can he do it and stay in bounds? Two! Yes, he can. All he had to do was keep his toes in. Keep his toes in, and you can take the man down out of bounds. Two nothing. Let's see it. Right here. In fact, Lovell uh, started to bail out. Vaughn did a real wise thing, covering the hips for two points. These two met earlier in the year, and Vaughn was defeated by level five to one. Only loss of the year oh, yeah. in the finals of the 16-team er, Urbandale tournament. Only loss for Vaughn all year. Now he's trying to get it back. He's up two to nothing here. Starts on top against Lovell. But Lovell's out right away, two to one on the escape. Good tussle here. We're going to slide in 2A here so you can see in Lee there. Klinkenborg and Dan Sperry. And Sperry has his man, Klinkenborg, on the back. And it's tight. It's really tight. And you'll have to watch the official. Very few seconds left. End of the period. So no fall, but you saw Sperry uh, pile up a point. He was ahead 9-2 to two in the second period, in the first period. 
It's our main match at uh, AAA. Score is two to one in favor of the man on the right, Terry Vaughn of Iowa City West. Double underhook situation for, for Lovell. With your head. He wants to work a trip with that if he can and can't at the moment. They're out of bounds with four seconds to go in the first period. Dwight Spangler of Bettendorf is the principal referee here. Well, Iowa City fans have to be pretty excited with West uh, finalists here and three from City High that represented well in the finals of the state tournament. Going across town and watching the uh, Hawks wrestle, I suspect. A little few models there. That's Danny Level starting underneath in the second period, two-minute period. Good hand control. He's out because he got a hand and he controlled it, got his hips away able to get one as a very good technique by Danny Lovell there where he came up hips under him and all the way up he had the hand two two on the edge this is Lovell whoa two, two. he has yes he does Vaughn on two. his back and he tried to height oh this is tough for Vaughn this could be what the Lovell family's been looking for for a few years and they're all here. Vaughn gets off his back. Nice job of fighting by Terry Vaughn to get off his back, but a big move Five point by move. Dan Lover. Boy, you, you, you can't come any closer and, and, and get, still get away than that one. Look at this. It's kind of like a, a little carry from the outside. Uh, he had he had the uh, car cross face there and drove it over through the crotch. There he is again with that. He's tough on top. I'll tell you, he's in, in with, a, with a really tough half Nelson. That was just a roll through. You see the referee Dwight Spangler saying no. Seven to two is the score here in favor of Dan Lovell of Marshalltown at with 45 seconds to go in the second period. And Vaughn of Iowa City is going to stop for a little repair here. Okay, in 1A, we did have a fall. Brian Fullman from Anita won by fall. And um, I think was the winner from uh, West Sioux. And we had a fall also at 2A. Sure. So they're over already. Dan Sperry pinned Lee Klinkenborg for an undefeated season. 30. So this is the only one left to go. We want to make sure we got the one right up at, up at uh, A. We were not watching that match, so we want to make sure we got the... Fullman one by Brian Fullman. Brian Fullman pinned Mike Hoyton. Anita, Brian Fullman. Here we are at AAA. The man riding now, Dan Lovell, leads seven to two with 25 seconds to go in the second period. His opponent is Terry Vaughn of Iowa City West, whom he has defeated Use it now. once this year. The only man to beat Terry Vaughn. Second period, almost history. Good, great. Seven two, favor of level. Red down. There's Phil Senator. Henning, coach at Marshalltown. All right, cover him. And Scott Williamson, coach at Iowa City West. And Lovell puts the blocks to Vaughn right away again. Get all the fingers under there. He likes to work that wrist. He really comes out on that wrist and puts a lot of pressure. Stay in there. You see that elbow, that left elbow. Not a lot of people know it, but Dan Lovell's been wrestling in a lot of pain. He's got very severely strained ligaments in his el left elbow right there and doesn't have much power there. So he's working at a handicap here and doing a fine job of it. You wouldn't know it by the score, seven to two. He's got the far elbow there. A little spiral ride action. About a minute and a half to go. 140 pounds, state championship match in the AAA. These are the big schools, no, no, bigger schools in the state. Warning green. To warning against Lovell. Stay on it, all right? 
Spangler doesn't like the two on one for a. Well, thought he had it too long. <laughs> two on one cover is a nice ride, but you've got to turn it into some offense, and it's hard to turn that into offense. Vaughn's roll doesn't work because Lovell comes right back into the situation again where he's left off. He's there. Look at this drive right there. He's driving. Vaughn picks it off, but that was close. And Lovell's doing a nice job right there, putting a lot of pressure on the top part of the body of Terry Vaughn. He had Vaughn on his back earlier, broke up a 2-2 tie with a five-point situation. Had uh, Vaughn in some serious trouble. And that's been the difference here so far. 40 seconds to go now. With Tim Johnson and our floor reporters, Dick Trotter and Dean Borg, I'm Doug Brown. Speaking to you from Veterans Auditorium, it's live coverage of the Iowa Public Television on Iowa Public Television of the high school championship Go. meet. There's Phil Henning. You may have seen Phil yeah. many times on our series hey, throughout the years, hey. refereeing too, but he enjoys this and he enjoys it particularly when his man's ahead seven to two, 30 seconds to go. Level on top there, he's a four-time state qualifier. The qualifier is a freshman and a sophomore. He was second last no, no, year. No, no, no. So been to the finals in the big dance here, and got to get them all, buddy. He okay. thinks that he's getting closer. Yeah, now there's there a goes. there's Scott Williamson, the coach at Iowa City West. Cover. Eight to two, a sore shoulder there with no, Terry Vaughn. Early green, caution green. Wait for the whistle, guys. Set tight. You set. You set still. Cover. Eight to two is the score now. Lovell just picked up another point. And it looks like there might be a level championship in the offing here because there are only a dozen seconds to go. Dan Lovell of Marshalltown driving that half Nelson against one, two. Terry Vaughn getting a near fall. Big win for the Lovell family. Ten to two. A state championship for Marshalltown High School's 140-pounder. That's Dan Level. Let's go to the awards now for 135-1A. Fifth place, Paul Kofelt, Leon Central Decatur. Fourth place, Kevin Brisker, Lisbon. Third place, Brad Longfellow, Bedford. Runner-up, Chad Ryan Underwood. And the 1A 135-pound champion from Onalo, West Monona, Tom Davis. Tom Davis on the top rung. Congratulations to him. One of 39 champions coming away from this tournament where more than 600 wrestlers came into town with high hopes. Now the two A's. Coach Gary Christensen of Winterset. Sixth place, Brian Knoll, Marinda. Fifth place, B.J. Miller, Buffalo Center, North Iowa. Fourth place, Kirk Stansberry, Sheraton. Third place, Mike Johanningmeyer, Wacon. Runner-up, Brian Furmeister, West Liberty. And the 2A 135-pound champion from Winterset, Corey Christensen. Corey Christensen. Repeating. Now 3A at the same weight, 135. We're getting the 3A 135-pound awards. Coach Ron Gray of West Des Moines Dowling. Sixth place, John Schieffer, Iowa City City High. Fifth place, Doug Budarf, Webster City. Fourth place, Chad Stecker, Boone. Third place, Jamal Fox, Waterloo West. Runner-up, Chad Vance, Charles City. 135-pound 3A champion from West Des Moines Dowling, Chris Capola. Congratulations to Chris Capola. Long tradition of Dowling. And here's Dean Borg with a floor report. Brian Fullman of Anita 
was leading two to nothing after a takedown in the first period, but he was reversed early in the second period, came back though with a quick escape and that takedown of his own, and then threw a cradle that you see right here, and that pinned Mike Hutink of Hayward and West Sioux, a fall at 346 by Brian Fullman, crowns him the champ at 140 in Class A. Dick. All right, Dean, we had a pin in the Class 2A section where Dan Sperry of Independence took just three minutes and one second to dispose of Lee Klinkenberg of Parkersburg. Here you see the takedown. He's a takedown artist and team captain, and there's the pin for Sperry of Independence. Now back to you, Doug. Undefeated season for Sperry. We're going up to 145 pounds now. Thank you, Dick Trotter and Dean Borg. And this is a big match we're going to be following. I'll tell you, it's a really big one because Cedar Falls Greg Halzer is up against Matt Hatcher of Cedar Rapids Prairie. And if Halzer wins, he makes it tough on Iowa City. That's right, because then Iowa City would have to win. Not only have to win two matches, they just have to win two. Because they're up by three. This would give them four more points. It'd be seven. And um, each win is four points. Right. That really puts the pressure on. But I'll tell you what, one of the outstanding wrestlers in the state is Matt Hatcher. He's been to the state four times. He was fifth as a freshman, third as a sophomore, and a returning state champion. So what's ahead of the Cedar Falls wrestler is a tough row. He's been beaten twice this year by Matt Hatcher. Hatcher in the black on the right. Halzer in the orange. At 1A, we'll be watching Zach Light of Lisbon, another light against John DeLeon of Britt, West Hancock. And then at 2A, Rick Moreno of Glenwood goes against Howard Fullhart of Decora. Rick Moreno, the brother of a wrestler who's at Iowa State. So here we are again, AAA, no score yet. They've used a minute. Hatcher, duck under, two, two. Hatcher's coach, Jim Kimball. Last year's Coach of the Year, fine program at Prairie. And of course, this year's Coach of the Year in 3A, the Cedar Falls coach, Gene Doyle. One red, both up. Two to one after the escape for Halzer. That's Halzer in on a single leg. He's a little bit short with it. And so Hatcher comes away with a situation here where he can Maybe post ahead and come around. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice knee tap. Oh, boy. But Halzer's able to face him off. But there, he grabs the ankle. Two, Key. Wow, that was a nice executed move by Matt Hatcher. And so the Cedar Rapids Prairie wrestler goes up with just two seconds. Now in one second, no That's seconds three, left guys. in the first period, four to one. Let's look at this 3A standings just to show you what uh, we mean here, how down. big this is for Halzer four to win because it's a three-point lead for Cedar Falls. Now, if he were to, if uh, Halzer were to win, that would put him up by seven, and then City High would have to win two matches. They'd have to win all of them. We talked earlier. They've already figured in the second place points, which is 12 points, and so first place is 16. That's four more points for a win here than any extra points. You can get as many as two more extra points with a fall. Maximum points for, for a win in the finals is six points. So Cedar Falls could really do some damage here for, uh, on, to Iowa go. City, but Hatcher is in control for Cedar Rapids Prairie, and he's having it his way. Four to two lead with a minute 23 to go in the second period. There's two, his three. second takedown. Another third takedown makes it 6 2. He's feeling confident he's going to let uh, Halzer go. One, Oh boy. Two, three. Eight, three. Again, he's gonna let him go. One, neutral. Eight, four. Hatcher has had it his own way on his feet. On the right. <laughs> snap down, and here he comes again. Two, he might pull that head down, a tough snap down. One, Posted the head, spun okay. around, and now it's 10-5 after the escape. Look at that duck. Wow. Talk about quick That's and powerful. 
That's Matt Hatcher. I mean, he can make things happen fast right now. A lot of college recruiters are looking at Matt. They're thinking anybody that can go through four times, place in the state four times in the state the side, Iowa, the top, two man, times state the champion, side. they're excited. 12-5. With 15 seconds, it looks like Hatcher is going to try to turn him. Not just going to turn him up, let him up this time. A 3A. Well, uh, Falzer's not able to pull this one out. City High has a very good chance of coming back because all he have to do is win one of the two remaining matches. Two choice green. Now we have, there's the end of the match. Well, and uh, the, the man who would possibly win that would be Brad Smith, the City High coach. And we talked to him earlier about what it would, about the possibility of winning a title. Well, coming in uh, City High for the first year, uh, one of the first goals I set for the team, I think the kids thought I was kind of crazy, but I said, we're going to shoot for a state championship. Um, now it's right in front of us. It's our opportunity to go out and, and grab it. We have three individuals in the finals. Uh, we're down by eight points. We control our own destiny. If we wrestle well tonight, we can reach that goal that we set. And uh, it's going to be unbelievable for our program and for, uh, you know, for the town of Iowa City. We're looking really forward to the challenge, and we'll just go from there and see what happens tonight. Hopefully things go our way. They're going their way here, although the Iowa City wrestler is not on the mat. It's 14 to 7 in favor of Matt Hatcher of Cedar Rapids Prairie up the road from Iowa City over Greg Halzer of the Iowa City major opponent here, Cedar Falls. That's but this green. is going a long ways uh, for Iowa City right here because now they will just need to win one match between their final two and the finals coming up. One if red, if Hatcher up. holds on to this win. 45 seconds to go. And here he comes again. Boy, I'll tell you, Hatcher has had it one red, his way on the feet. Centered in, guys. 18 to 6. 9, 18 to 9. He's traded two for one all night. Here he comes again. That's two, Green. 20 to 9 with 15 seconds to go. So and he's got Halser broken down there. He's really winning in an impressive fashion. Very impressive match for Matt Hatcher, Cedar Rapids Prairie. Well, City High has two wrestlers left in the tournament that we haven't seen yet. That's it, guys. And they have to win them. You don't just get them by this one reputation. They have yeah. to win one. It's a the winner yeah. there, Matt Hatcher, and impressively so, 20 to 9 for a state championship. Cedar Rapids Prairie. Keith, we get the ankle band, Keith. We're right. at one. We have time to go to 1A now. This is between Zach Light in the black unif in the uh, black uniform with the white stripe around the middle, and in the lighter uniform, the red uniform. That is John DeLeon, who's the coach's son, Al DeLeon, and Britt West Hancock. The score here is now three zip. No, it's nine nine to. Uh, 9-3. 11 to 3. 11 to 3. Okay. 11 to 3. And Zach Light leading with a minute 20 left, and he's going for his second state championship. The senior, brother of Ike Light, who won his third title tonight. Zach Light going for his second state championship. And like you mentioned, Doug, that's Al DeLeon, son, John DeLeon. Minute 15 seconds to go here. Somebody sitting right in front of the score. So I'm glad you have better eyes than I have here. Tim better Johnson. angle, better angle. I don't think I have any better eyes. <laughs> All right, 11 to 3. Zach Light, 35 and 1 this year. Well, and he's also broke his brother's record for most wins. He's 148 and 7 over a career and broke Shane, the four time state champion's record, for his school record. 11 to 4. He gave up a reverse, uh, an escape in order to go back out and try for the takedown. He had no trouble getting it. And he's up 13 to 4. Zach was a qualifier his freshman year, second his sophomore year, and a state champion last year. He's a three time state freestyle champion also, and he was a National All-American in the Junior Freestyle Tournament. 
So he's an accomplished wrestler, and he's going to go to college somewhere, but he hasn't decided where yet. And that's the same with John DeLeon. Double leg and a dump. Oh, and now he has DeLeon on his back. Couldn't keep him there. 15, 17 to 5. A 12-point lead with 28 seconds to go. Zach Light. One of the things about Lisbon and the key to their success, Chris Limbeck is the coach for, for Lisbon. He took over for Brad Smith. One of the things, they wrestle so competitively. They wrestle up and hot, uh, with uh, schools that are bigger than them, and they get a lot of experience coming in there. Nice job by Chris Limbeck in his first year taking over for Brad Smith. And at the 2A class, Rick Moreno was the winner over Howard Fullhart of Decora. The score was 12-4. Moreno of Glenwood becomes a state champion. And it is Zach Light. And so let's go to the awards at 141A. Sixth place, Dean Leaders, Underwood. Fifth place, Kevin Palmer, Gilbertville, Don Bosco. Fourth place, Kelby Keener, Monona, MFL. Third place, Rob Waddle, Liberty Center, Southeast Warren. Runner-up, Mike Heitnick, Hayward and West Sioux. And the 100... 40-pound champion from Anita, Brian Bowman. One of the winners by fall tonight, Brian Bowman. Not only won a championship, but he, he got it in a big way. Now the 2A winners, one through six. 16 in each weight class when they came in here, six of them on the stand. Coach Brett Adams of Independence. Sixth place, Brent Dunlap, Washington. Fifth place, Travis Smith, Tama, South Tama. Fourth place, Jason Rubelkava, Marion. Third place, Brett Dutton, Nevada. Runner-up, Lee Klinkenborg, Parkersburg. And 140-pound 2A champion from Independence, Dan Sperry. An undefeated season for Dan. He also won by pin tonight in his championship match. Congratulations, Dan made Coach Brett Adams very, very happy. Now they go down, and we'll have the six place winners in the AAA here in Veterans Auditorium at 140. Coach Bill Henning in Marshalltown. Sixth place, Shane Roberts, Southeast Polk Runnels. Fifth place, Ray Lucarnan, Keokuk. Fourth place, Jamil Habhab, Fort Dodge. Third place, Chad Van Cleve, Dubuque, Hempstead. Runner-up, Terry Vaughn, Iowa City West. And the 140-pound 3A champion from Marshalltown, Danny Lovell. Congratulations to Danny Lovell. And here's Dick Trotter. All right, Dean, your champion at 145 pounds in 2A competition, Rick Marino of Glenwood. He made it look easy. He was the state champion a year ago. He used four takedowns in the fourth period to defeat Howard Fullart of Decora. And there you see Marino coached by Bob Dyer, a former coach of the year. It was 12 to 4, Marino. Now back to you, Doug. We're going now from 152 up through 189 here in the live coverage on Iowa Public Television of the wrestling championships of the state of Iowa to the 1A class, first of all, and then we'll keep our eye on the 2A and 3A and back up. At 152 in the A class, the smaller schools, Central City's George Robinson will wrestle Nashua's Brad Olson. Each man has lost just once this year. The referee will be Arlo Fleggy of Waverly. Lots of experience as an official, longtime referee in the state. 152 pound class. And that is Brad Olson of Nashua in the red. George Robinson of Central City in the black. And they're on the 1A mat. Robinson, a three-time state qualifier, third last year at 145. 
There's the 2A set up over there, too, at the same time. Corey Jones of Iowa Falls is wrestling undefeated Ryan Cummins of Minneapolis for the championship in double-A. And a triple-A, Jay Cox of Indianola against the Buke Wallers, Bart Horton. when you get around here. That uh, Cummings is interesting. He won the Minnesota State Championship at Osseo, Minnesota last year. And now he's down in the finals of the Iowa State Championship. We'll ask him afterwards which is tougher. Uh, Brad Olson also is a three-time. Olson from Nashua, also a three-time state qualifier, third last year at 140 pounds. So we have a couple of returning third-place winners going for the championship. And that's Olson. Again going under, but blocked off by Robinson. No score. Bring her back in the middle. Let's keep it in the middle. A minute gone. Keep it right in here, fellas. Brad Olson with his back to you. George Robinson on the left. Brad Olson. 35 and one, had a great year and he's had 23 pins. He likes to be on his feet, he likes to pin. And we're, you know, up that, uh, he's getting uh, in the Russian tie against him right now. Yeah, he likes to work upper body. George Robinson from Central All good, City. double take leg. Back, take back, lay Good setup there by, by, by Robinson and a nice takedown. Two Drop down to the double leg. He's 33 and one and guess how many pins he has, Doug? Oh, I'd guess maybe 23? Exactly. <laughs> 46 pins between these two this year, both of them 23 pins. After the escape, two to one. Two to one, Robinson. You know, almost to a T, when we ask these wrestlers what's their biggest accomplishment as a wrestler, they've said qualifying and being in the finals tonight. You know, it's some of them have even predicted on, winning the yeah, finals say, tonight. Yeah. What was your, what was your biggest accomplishment so far this year? Winning the finals tonight. <laughs> I like that kind of thinking. First period is over. It's two to one. Here's Rice Red. Nashua coached by Stephen Lee. Red says both He's up. been a head coach 12 years. He's been at uh, Nashua in one capacity or another is 15 for 15 years. John Davids, the coach at Central City, has been the head coach there for six years. Now, it's interesting there, Robinson in the black had the choice, decided he felt more comfortable on his feet. He, had, he has the only takedown so far. I don't know whether he... He knows that he uh, that uh, perhaps Olsen is a good rider. He'd rather not be underneath. But he knows he's worked well up above, and so here he is. Robinson and Olsen starting the second period on their feet. Olsen, he's an all-round athlete. He set the school record in rushing, his first team all-district in baseball. And so he knows uh, how to play several sports. That's the way it should be. That's Olsen in the red, on the left now. Tried a long single. He was short with it, but he gets his position back. Tried it again. Robinson on the right, leads two to one. A minute four to go in the second period. It's two to one. Robinson in the black uniform from Central City has the only takedown. That's the difference. Move it in. Again, that's, see, Olsen has not been able to reach him with that there, center. Look at that. Robinson's in. Head, head to the outside, cut off for the double, two points. Go, go, go. No points? No. Did he give him? He did uh, not, from what I see. I like called it a little fast there, and, and that's uh, because the Nashua wrestler was able to Man. keep his arm in there and keep uh, Robinson from scoring, but that was a nice execution by yeah. Robinson. Two to one. Olsen, the single. Olsen has been singling uh, Robinson, but he's not, reach, not reaching him. He's not going all the way through with it. Still 30 seconds to go in the second period, and it's, all, it's two to one. This is anybody's match. Now that's a, that's a warning against Olsen. 
for backing away. So next time that happens, it's a point against him. Here he comes in on the, looks like a, going for a high crotch. If he can get on uh, all the way through, he couldn't. 14 seconds to go. He did not get the takedown. Move up. We've got two, seconds. two seconds to go in the second period, two to one. Now you're looking at the 2A mat. Ryan Cummings is ahead five to two going into the third period. From Minneapolis, Ryan Three Cummings ahead down. of Corey Jones from Iowa Falls. Trying to protect his unbeaten record. And a triple A. Winner of the it's tied over there at 5-5 between Jay Cox and Bart Horton. Looking and at uh, Horton right there from Waller. In our main match, now the third period started, and uh, George Robinson picked up. That's interesting. Robinson had his choice. He wants to stay up. Well, uh, Olsen had his choice, of course. He, he was on the bottom trying to make the point up. Chest to chest now as they go out of bounds. Naturally, there's nothing surprising about that as, uh, as you readily are, if you're very aware, Brad Olson needs a point and he'd like to get out and get it and then go back to work on the feet. But Robinson has held him for the first 30 seconds of the period. Driving through. Whoa. Still there. Remember that Olson. Move on. That Robinson has been warned once. So he's going to have to be careful how he rides. He's going to have to work for the fall and not sit on the lead. Darla Fleggy will tag him if he does. He's riding with a, a half Nelson, a spiral, going back and forth. But the key is that he's riding right now, and it doesn't appear that he's trying to turn. He's got the leg hook. And he's just kind of doing enough to keep the flaggy off him, but I don't know whether uh, it's going to work very much longer. He's managed to stay on. It's two to one, and you heard Olive Flaggy say work for a fall. He'd just as soon not get involved in this match. Half Nelson by Robertson. But Riding Olsen up on the knees, and there is the, there is the penalty. This is the opportunity that Olsen needs to take right now. I guess it was uh, Olsen who must have been warned. Therefore, it is not a point. Set that up for the wrong man there. Well, so he could afford that, I guess. Now he can't. He has to go out. He has 30 seconds to go. It's Robinson leading, two to one, and on top. Olsen needs to explode out of there. He needs to come up with his hips and the head up and go, hand control and get out. Take him out. There he goes. Looks like he is almost out. Whoa. Not, should be not quite one. No. Same position. Ten seconds to go. And the man in the underneath position, Olsen, has to escape. Or Robinson wins. Here he comes, trying to switch. He'll not do it. it. Won't happen. He was close, but no cigar. And on the other mats, Dan Cummings, the coach of Minneapolis, is happy because his son, Ryan Cummings, has won a state championship in Iowa now to go along with Minnesota. And it's not quite over on 3A. The winner there, Robinson, George Robinson of Central City. His 34th win this year against one loss, the biggest win of the year, a two-to-one victory over Brad Olson of Nashua at the 1A level, 152 pounds. And Bart Horton beat Jay Cox. Horton from Wallert beat Cox from Indianola. Score was six to five. That was a close one, too. We'll have our floor reporters, Dick Trotter and uh, Dean Borg, tell you all about that here in just a bit. Let's have the awards now at 145 from Veterans Auditorium. These are the Ladies top six at 1A. Your attention to the award stand at the east end of the auditorium. Presenting the Class 1A 145-pound awards, 
Coach Chris Lambeck of Lisbon. Sixth place, Jamie Downing, Nashua. Fifth place, Clinton Dunlop, Woodbine. Fourth place, Chad King, Corning. Third place, Andy Hensley, Anita. Runner up, John DeLeon, Britt, West Hancock. And the 145 pound 1A champion from Lisbon, Zach Light. Three time champion, Zach Light. He's been there before, the state champion team in Lisbon. This year, coached by Chris Lembeck. These wrestlers are the top six in two eight. Five pound awards, Coach Bob Dyer of Glenwood. Sixth place, Derek Gruss, Carlisle. Fifth place, John Mast, Independence. Fourth place, Dave McAllister, Washington. Third place, Donnie Chamberlain, Tama, South Tama. Runner-up, Howard Fullhart, Decora. And the 2A 145-pound champion from Glenwood, Rick Marino. A two-time champion from a wrestling family. Mike Moreno, senior at Iowa State, doing very well this year. One of the rated wrestlers in 134 college. These are the AAA top six. Presenting the 3A 145-pound awards, Coach Jim Kimball of Cedar Rapids Prairie. Sixth place, Chad Zuspan, Fort Dodge. Fifth place, Cole Chance, Boone. Fourth place, Nathan Sherwood, Burlington. Third place, Andy Haight, Charles City. Runner-up, Greg Halser, Cedar Falls. And the 3A 145-pound champion from Cedar Rapid Prairie, Matt Hatcher. Hey, that makes the year worthwhile, doesn't it, huh? Let's go to Dean Borg. Well, Doug, Ryan Cummings of Minneapolis proved tonight he can do it in both states. He's been a state wrestling champion in Minnesota. And he tonight methodically went about workmanship, a takedown in the first period, an escape and takedown in the second, and another takedown in the third period, allowing Corey Jones of Iowa Falls only three escapes, and thereby Ryan Cummings, a champion in Iowa too, 73. The champion Ryan Cummings in double A, 152. Dick. All right, Dean, in triple A, Bart Horton of Dubuque stage, a fantastic comeback, trailing early. He scored five big points. There you see him in the second period to win over Jay Cox of Indianola 6-5. Back to you, Doug. Thank you, gentlemen. I wonder if how many times that's happened before. A, a dual state champions, a champion in more than one state. Well, we have 160 pounds coming up. We're still at 1A. Tim Yeager undefeated in 36 matches from George Little Rock. He's on the left. And his opponent is Joe Keelman of Parksville, also undefeated with one draw in 28 matches. He's from Allison Bristow School, coached by Ron Peterson. The referee is Iowa Falls' Check Dale it McDonough. Keep it in. Keep it in. And it's a first period, two minutes long, in the maroon uniform. That's Tim Jagger. That is not Tim Jagger. It's Joe Keelman from Clarksville. Allison Bristow. In the other matches, too, that we'll be following with double A, Lee Fullhard of Decorah is wrestling Kirk Crawford of LaPorte City I'm Union. Seeing. And uh, that tussle on the edge of the mat over there is between those two. And in the triple A, it's Lewis Palsang of City High of Iowa City. And I'll tell you, if he wins, Iowa City wins. Iowa City first wins championship. the title. So we'll be watching that at three. A Ben Smith is his opponent from Southeast Polk. So it's not an easy battle here. Kielman from Clarksville is doing a really nice job of riding. He's got the wrist there, got an inside spiral, underhook. Last year's state champions, Clarksville. 160 pound class. 1992 high school wrestling championships of the state of Iowa on Iowa Public Television live for you. We love to bring them to you every year. We've been televising these for 21 years. And Keelman maintains his position on top. Now he has Jaeger flat. Good strong bar arm.
Here we go. We're looking. We were looking uh, a moment ago at a possible pin over on the 1A in the 2A mat. Oh, he's a fireball, and that was uh, Fullhart over uh, Kirk Crawford, and he got a five-point move out of that. So we'll keep an eye on that a little bit later on too. That period just ended. We're, the main match Green here third. is uh, Tim Yeager against Joe Keelman. And over on 3A, you're Neutral. looking at the uh, at Louis Pelsang and Ben Smith. You know, I'd like to just say right now, we were talking about Corey Christensen and Gary Christensen. I'd like to congratulate with Bart, Bart Horton's win. He's coached by his father, Tom Horton. So there's another dad-son combination. Congratulations to Dubuque Wallert's uh, head coach, Tom Horton. You know, it's frustrating for you. You want to keep track of all the matches. It's impossible for us to really keep track of everything. We try to show you as much as we can. We have our floor reporters, Dean Borg and Dick Trotty, to tell you what happens in areas that we aren't able to cover. But if we have a ball coming up, looks like a pin, we'll try to get on it as quickly as we can. And also, we're interested, too, in that City High match over there because uh, Southeast Polk is now has its man over Pelsang, and that means that if City High couldn't win that match, they'd go down to heavyweight for their last chance to win the title. Charles City leads by three points in the team total. Well, right here, it's 2-2. After that, Tim Yeager just scored with a minute to go in the second period. And here he is on top. Warning on the bottom. Official Dale McDonough says that Keelman is not doing his best. Well, Keelman's a three-time state qualifier. He was second last year at 152. And then Jaeger was sixth last year at 145, up a couple of weights. And so have a couple of very accomplished wrestlers. Undefeated, both of them undefeated. They're both tough on top. You might expect out of good wrestlers. Jaeger with a tight waist. Human gets to his feet and out, so he's now ahead three to two. Tim Jaeger's one that's already decided on his college. He says he's gonna go wrestle for Al Baxter at Buena Vista. Keelman says, I'm going to college, but I don't know where yet. And that's Keelman on the left. Jaeger on the right in the black uniform, Keelman in the maroon. Keelman really knows how to pin. Out of 27 wins, he has 22 falls. Tim Jaeger also has 21 falls out of his 36 wins. Second period ends. Green. Keelman leads three to two. Keelman has there's David Schaefer, George Little, or no, that's Ron uh, Peterson right there. We're Take looking down. at the Green coach down. of last year's state Green champion Clarksville. Ron Peterson with the glasses there, done a great job at Clarksville. Has two finalists this year. We'll see Wade Crozier out 189. That's Jaeger riding, but trailing in the third period. He has a point to make up, so now he has to turn Keelman or let him up, as he just did, and take him down to try to tie it. 4-2. But here comes Jaeger. But uh, Keelman uh, made the shot. They're separated by two points. The leader is the man on the left, Joe Keelman. 160 pounds, 1A. Come on, fellas, let's go. Open it up. Official Dale McDonald sets him up again. Long shot, low shot by Tim Yeager. If he can take get this takedown, he would tie it. But he hasn't been able to lock it up. Out of bounds. A minute and ten to go. We go again. Yeager on the left has two points to make up and a minute to do it in. Nice shot, low single right there, in on the knee. But that's Keelman. Now, yep, the Keelman, nice shot there. Now he just needs to finish a dump action. And he, did. he does. When Big one, he's on up night four. You can't do it any better than Keelman just did it. That was textbook. Saw so his coach, Ron Peterson, jump straight up in the air with that one. <laughs> that's great to see. No matter what, it's great to see great moves. And Keelman did a nice job. He dropped in on the single, finished it off, and got his two points. Now that puts... Jaeger in a hole, flat on his belly. Oh, Four yeah. points down with 25 seconds left. 
Hard to make up four points when you're chest to chest with the mat. Tough forearm by Kielman. Neither of these men has lost a match this year. We're at right away from the end. Four seconds from it being over. Two, one. A victory for Joe Kielman. And Iowa City just tied it, their match over there. Let's, well, let's go over and look at that. Just got a takedown on the edge of the mat. That's... There's the winner, Joe Kielman, first of all, from... Turn it around, turn it around. And we're going to go watch the AAA match because this one is very big. If Lewis Pelsang and Ben Smith in Southeast Pokemon, it's 5-5 with a minute 10 left in the match. And Pelsang is in the red uniform, and Ben Smith of Southeast Polk is in the dark oh, uniform. Now, Pelsang wins this match. Rick City High wins the team title. There are three Simple points down. behind, and he'll give him four if he wins. He, and now he lets the man go. It's five, the six five here in favor of Smith. Red Owens, the coach of Southeast Polk, and Ben Smith, and of course Brad Smith, the coach at Iowa City High in his first year trying to bring their first state championship to him, and he knows something about state championships. And by the way, the uh, the double A match is over to Lee Fullhart beat Kirk Crawford eight to nothing. Decorus Lee Fullhart wins the state championship at 2A over Laporte City Union's Kirk Crawford. And Crawford had been undefeated until the final match. We have 45 seconds here to go. Oh, and here it comes. Step the ahead. Iowa up. City man, it's Pelsang. If he had gotten back points out of that, it would have been all over. But he's up now by one. And 30 seconds to, to go. If he were to ride Smith out and win by one point, everybody from City High in this building is going to go right up to the ceiling. Well, and, and out in Iowa City, this is the first time ever. And the Little Hawks. 22 seconds to go. Lifts his man. Out of bounds, and that used up about eight seconds. 15 seconds to go. Back to the referee's position. We'll see what Smith does off the whistle. It's very important for him to get a good move here. He has only 15 seconds to get out. The referee is Tim Fowler of Cedar Rapids, but he's back to you there. Pelzang goes down on the ankle, but here's Smith up. Switch. Pelzang's holding the position. Is he? Four, three, two, one. City High is the state, state champion. champion. Brad, is Coach Brad Smith saying go out and shake that hand? Yeah, first things first. <laughs> Lewis Palsang, a state champion at 160, and City High. That's not a new experience for Brad Smith, of course, but let's go to the awards now at 152 pounds, Sixth one place, Chris Clark, Jewel South Hamilton. Fifth place, Scott Vanderbrink, West Lion Inwood. Fourth place, Matt Kruger, George Little Rock. Third place, Scott Forsen, New London. Runner up, Brad Olson of Nashua. And the 1A 152 pound champion from Central City, George Robinson. Congratulations to George Robinson. Number one in the 1A class, 152 pounds. Coached by John Davids. Here come the two A's. The top six of 16 who came into this meet. 152 pound awards, Coach Dan Cummings of Mediapolis. Sixth place, Blake Williams, Decora. Fifth place, Brad Beeman, Johnston. Fourth place, Philip Schaefer, Denver. Third place, Mike Euchre, Osage. Runner-up, Corey Jones, Iowa Falls. And the 2A 152-pound champion from Mediapolis, Ryan Cummings. Ryan Cummings. 
Ryan Cummings is the 52 a champion at 2A. Yeah, he's got another year to come. A lot of good understanding. Now, there's the 3A. That's what happened after the win by Pelsang at 160. Cedar Falls has nobody left, so City High wins. They still have a chance to pad, pad to that at heavyweight. Coach Tom Horton of Dubuque Waller. Sixth place, Troy Milbrandt, Iowa City, City High. Fifth place, Nick Quayle, Spencer. Fourth place, Daryl Wyland, Cedar Falls. Third place, Rob Olney, Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Runner-up, Jay Cox, Indianola. And the 3A 152-pound champion from Dubuque Wallert, Bart Horton. Little family exchange of gifts there. Yeah, that's great. That is. Bart Horton, the champion at 52. Dean Borg, where are you? Well, Doug, if you can say we had an upset in uh, people that are so closely matched, perhaps we did in class AA at 160. Kurt Crawford, who had 74 wins without a loss. There he is in the red outfit on the bottom here, and he's uh, Lee Fullhart is just taking the match away from him. What happened was in the first period, Kurt Crawford, last year's 152-pound champ, failed to concede uh, a takedown. He lost his base, fell behind five to nothing, never recovered, and the champion is Lee Fullhart of Decora with an eight to nothing decision over Crawford. Dick, you have a guest. All right, Doug Louie Felsang of Iowa City scared the people from that town. He fell behind early but came back. And with me is uh, the winningest coach in uh, two. Well, we've got Lisbon, now we've got Iowa City, Brad Smith. Brad, what was the uh, final clue to Louis Pelsang in that match? Well, you know, the, the kid was really taking it to him. He out-wrestled Lewis for two periods. Lewis finally got things going, and uh, he scored when he had to. He didn't really open up to the third period, but he scored when he had to, and I'm proud as hell of him. And there we see it. Congratulations, Brad. Fantastic comeback for... Iowa City, who have now wrapped up the 3A title. Back to you, Doug. He jumps pretty well, too, I'd say. He could have... Brad's caught a lot of them in his career. <laughs> He's a great coach. Now let's go up to a next weight. We're still in the 1As here, 171 pounds. We have Marengo, Iowa Valley's Kirk Rasheen wrestling Gilbertville Don Bosco's Todd Gray for the championship, 171 pounds. And that is Rasheen of Marengo, Iowa Valley on the left, Todd Gray on the right with a white top. Rasheen is undefeated. Rasheen was fourth last year at 171. Up there at 2A in the corner, you see Tony Ursland of Humboldt and Richie Ludwig of Dyersville Beckman. Now, these are undefeated wrestlers going for the title. And we'll keep an eye on that. And at AAA, Chad Niles of Charles City against Ernest Middleton of Waterloo Circle. West. Circle. And this, of course, Todd Gray. It's his first shot at the state championship, first shot at the state tournament. He's a senior, had never been to the state tournament before. He wrestles for one of my favorite coaches, Dan Mashick. Don Bosco, been there for 22 years. Done a great job. Oh, Rocky walked in right on him. And uh, this undefeated wrestler, Rasheen, shows you why he's 33 and zip with that takedown. Two to nothing. Rasheen, 171 pounder. That's Todd Gray. Rasheen let him up because he feels he can take him down. Coached by Joe Loftus. Been the coach at Iowa Valley for seven years. Coach Kurt, uh, Travis Pfizer in, uh, in high school, who is now a ranked wrestler and an All-American for Iowa. Came at, Travis came out of Iowa Valley. This is, uh, this is the AAA match. We're looking at the pin up in the corner. The winner there was Ernest Middleton. How about that? Big win for Coach Don Huff. He's had a great program there at West Waterloo and got a big win. That was at AAA. A fall for Middleton against Chad Niles. Now back to 1A here. You see Rasheen ahead four to two. He's dominated Todd Gray on his feet. And uh, the uh, two wrestlers are still on their feet out in the middle there with Rasheen. 
dominating at this point. Had something like a, a two man. an ankle pick his last time out. I got a kick out of Brad Smith coming by. He's shaking hands with everybody all the way down the press table on, on his way by. I like a coach that gets excited. He always has. There's Joe Loftus there, the Iowa Valley coach, getting excited himself. He's coming on optional now. Here we go. His man is in the advantage position. He's going to start. Let his man go because he wants to wrestle on the feet, leading four to three. Circle, work in, man. Work in the middle. Referee Thomas Moore of Griswold Four takes him back out to the middle again. Single leg by Rasheen. He's driving hard. Does he no, have it? No, he doesn't. They're out of bounds. Whizzer in there by Todd Gray kept uh, Rasheen from getting that takedown. Rasheen was a academic all-state wrestling team last year and you know that has its merits and a, a deal between the wrestling coaches association and the predicament they print an academic all-state team there's two points for Rajin and last year a coach from Princeton University saw that list and now two wrestlers from the state of Iowa are wrestling for Princeton on scholarship because of that list that, uh, of the all-academic state team and so that's just great Six to four now, with 50 seconds to go in the second period. The man in black there, Come on guys, let's Kirk Rushing, who has uh, made the difference here, with his work, here. work on the feet. There's Don Mashik, the coach of Don Todd Gray. Kirk uh, Rushing with his superior work on the feet, leading by two. 171 pound class of 1A. The score, man. level here the smaller schools in the state going back, 27 seconds left second period going back to the Iowa wrestling official coaches and officials association the list of an academic all state working with the predicament they do a lot of things for wrestling in Iowa their coaches and officials that are together to try to promote the sport and make it better and working with the board of control of the high school association they were the reason for this new format that allowed all wrestlers to have two matches. Good job, coaches and officials association. One red. He's back. A real tribute. wrestler. You have to have coaches and officials working together to make a sport go, and I don't think there's any better than the ones red, that are in red. Iowa. Red takes down. Score is uh, four to one over there in favor of Ursland of Humboldt over Dyersville Beckman's Richie Ludwig. Here the score is seven to four in favor of the man with the black uniform, Kirk Rushing. We're in the third period, just started. Did he get it? Well, that was a very nicely um, executed move, but they said they were out of bounds. There's Krieger, Tim Krieger, assistant coach at uh, Iowa State, sitting by Kevin Jackson, who's a also an assistant champion. coach, a world champion, looking toward the Olympics. Yeah, they're looking for prospects, you know, and there are a lot of major coaches who come to the Iowa State wrestling championships, as you know. We've talked about the underclassmen, too. I think they're going to try to have to get more seats for the number of college coaches that are going to come next year. Middle, middle. Right. Well, we've seen some underclassmen come of age here tonight who were surprises, I think, particularly in the lower weights. Seven to four in favor of Rasheen here. Trying to finish an undefeated season. See with that underhook, uh, Rasheen likes to underhook and then go for the heel pick. He scored on it one time. He has a minute and three to go. And the score is... Seven to four. Seven to four. It, it's four-four on two-way right now with 16 seconds left. 
The score is 4-4 four to four between Tony Ursland from Humboldt and Richie Ludwig from Dyersville Beckman. Ludwig just got a takedown to make it 4-4. Four to four. Between two undefeated wrestlers. Another takedown for Rasheem. He's up 9-4 with 40 seconds to go over Todd Gray. 9-5 after the escape. This is a 2A match. There's 9-8. Seven, six, five seconds left. They're going to overtime. They're going into sudden death. <laughs> well, let's see what happens here. We'll probably be able to see some of that because it's 23 seconds to go here with Rasheen leading nine to five. And looking real tough out there. He's, uh, he's, he gets the takedown, makes it the 11-5. Machine has handled himself very well. One green. The 11-6. Gray tried to throw, but couldn't, uh, he had to do something. 13 to 6. And there it is. The winner one green from again. Marengo, Iowa Valley. And over on 2A, they're in sudden death, and they just won. Tony Ursland just took down Richie Ludwig again, to win it in overtime. We couldn't get to it in time. There was a single leg takedown over there. The winner is Kirk Rasheen here over Todd Gray of Gilbertville, Don Bosco in the 1A final. Championship for Rasheen. Well, we'll let's look, let's look. we do have a tape of that uh, Ursland Ludwig match or the overtime between two undefeated wrestlers right here he's got the arm behind the back right there and he just sits back drops down 31 seconds into the overtime two points person uh, i think that's the Tony coach Ballinger, calling it but the Moravia. referee uh, agreed Fifth let's place, go to the Tom awards one a central decatur fourth place matt hoover bell plain third place jeff clark lisbon runner-up tim yeager george little rock and the Class 1A 160-pound champion from Clarksville, Allison Bristow, Joe Keelman. Clarksville, last year's team champion. They're still putting out individual champions in 1992. Attaboy, Joe. at uh, 160. Let's go up to the two A's now. For the top six there. Sixth place, Mark Vanderland in Carlisle. Fifth place, Jeff Soppy, Manchester, West Delaware. Fourth place, West Collie, Winterset. Third place, Eric Eckerman, Forest City. Runner-up, Kirk Crawford, LaPorte City Union. And the Class 2A 160-pound champion from Decorah, Lee Fullhart. A champion for Northeast Iowa. Lee Fullhart, coached by Roger Williams. He won 8 to nothing. We had a 160-pound final here tonight. Now we go to AAA. 160-pound award. Coach Brad Smith of Iowa City City High. Sixth place, Joe Thompson, Des Moines East. Fifth place, Paul Wolf, Dubuque Hempstead. Fourth place, Lamont Alvarez, West Des Moines Dowling. Third place, Dan Kielgar, Lewis Central Council Bluffs. Runner-up, Ben Smith, Southeast Polk Reynolds. And the 3A 160-pound champion from Iowa City City High, Lewis Pelsang. The man who wrapped it up for City High, and he has every reason to smile. I, how about that? Let's go to Dean Borg. Well, Doug Turner Ursland of Humboldt was last year's defending champion. He was defending champion. He was at 171 pounds in Double A, and there you see him again. He is the champion, but it wasn't easy. He was tied 4-4 at the end of regulation and took an overtime, 31 seconds into overtime, scored a takedown, and defeated Richie Ludwig of Dyersville Beckman. And so Tony Ursland repeats at 171 pounds, Double A. Dick. Dean in Triple A, you see here Ernest Middleton of West Waterloo as he put Chad Niles to his back with a minute and uh, 57 seconds. He was a champion tonight and a runner-up back in 1990, injured last year. Now back to you, Doug. Good win for West Waterloo. That's the quickest pin I think we've had in the finals tonight. 
Now we have 189. We're still with the 1As. We go to 275. The heavyweights will move up to AAA for, their, for our principal match. Here it's Rick Sanger of Britt, West Hancock, undefeated, against Wade Cruz of Clarksville, Allison Bristow, undefeated. Woo! 36 this could matches be a really a good match. Now that's uh, Cruz on the left in the maroon uniform, Sanger on the right, and the white and two. Cruz took the double leg right to it. Well, they both pack a punch. They're powerful wrestlers. Look at it, a little snap, but he drops right in. The snap was initiated in by Sanger, but all it did was drop a powerful uh, Cruz right into him for two points. Oh, Sanger, get him all. Okay, and the other matches are this way. Get At 2A, Matt Eckerman of Forest City is going for the title against Frank Bachman of Glenwood. That's the second Glenwood man to try to try for the uh, state title. They've won one already. And in AAA, it's, it's Rusty Van Wetzinger 90, 90, 90, 90, of Pleasant 90, Valley 90, 90. in a battle of the undefeateds 90, 90. against Webster City's Ryan Riesland. So we'll keep track of those two along the way. This is Wade Cruz. After a takedown, putting the blocks to Sanger with a real strong bar arm. In fact, it was a little bit too strong for uh, Richard Gray, the official from St. Charles. So he called him off of that. You have to watch the angle of the shoulders, you know. Oh. Cruz taking the first move away from Sanger nicely with the in the tight waist. Forty-five seconds to go in first period. Now we're in that classic single leg position, but the man with the leg who has the One. Sanger's leg in the air, Cruz, owns the advantage and he's keeping it. Well, these, back in, guys. both these Good wrestlers job. have back. been in the finals in. before. Cruz winning it last year in single A and Sanger, a runner-up at the same weight class, but in a different class. Last table. year, he was runner-up in 2A, and his school is now single-A. So they've both been here. 28 seconds to go. Cruz, again, latches on to Sanger's wrist and hits him with a strong, tight waist. Now, referee Richard Gray says to Cruz, you're stalling with that. Well, I don't understand that. I thought he was trying to crank on him right there. I didn't, you know, there's an example. I've seen Cruz go after him the whole match right now so far. Out of bounds, no score. These two are wrestling. Back to the center. Two to nothing. Nine left. Cruz got a takedown fairly early in the, in the period, and he has ridden Sanger since. He's ridden him hard, and he's been active. Now they're faced up, but always Cruz has been able to Same be way, aggressive enough way. to knock uh, Sanger back easy. off balance. There's, there's Dan, Dan Gable, Gable and Kathy, his wife. Up there. I think watch they've been him. here the whole week because there's been a lot of wrestling to watch, and they haven't had to wrestle this weekend. He's got the team around him. Jim Zaleski, assistant coach. I saw one of the Steiners there to the left of Kathy. Which one? Oh, come on. <laughs> you didn't need to ask me that. <laughs> first grade. <laughs> <laughs> Got a red toy. All right, the end of the red first period. First, green <laughs> it's down. one to nothing in 2A right now with Matt Ackerman from Forest City leading over Frank Bachman from Glenwood. 1-0 with a minute Set. and a half or a minute 10 seconds left in the second period. And in 3A with a minute and 10 to go in the second period, it's 3 nothing Riesland over Van Wetzinger in the Battle of Undefeated. Here's uh, Sanger starting on top in the second period, riding. He puts the leg in. We haven't seen too many people riding with a leg in no. in, this, in, this, in these finals. But Cruz comes to his feet. Now he's going to switch. And he's going to get the job done. Does the bar, he got the single across to a bar star and down. Work it up, work it up. A, lot of, a lot of aggressiveness right there. Yep. By Cruz, and he's up 4-0. Okay, he's back, he's been an impressive uh, young man here. In this yes, match. he has. But we're still only halfway through it. Half the match yet to go. A minute and a half to go in the second period. 4 nothing in favor of Cruz of Clarksville, Allison Bristow. Cut 
off Sanger's switch and then faces straight into him again. He's been very good when Sanger gets to his feet. He's been able to drive into him as soon as Sanger faces off. Cover. Well, he's got, uh, Cruz has got a nice long body with a lot of power. You can tell that. And he's got good a lot going this for this time. Him. Look good at that. switch by Ooh, Sanger. And he made it work that time and it's now four to two. Like I said, Sanger is powerful, and I thought it would be power punch to, you know, at the first I saw him win a big match in the semifinals that I thought Watch would be out. close, and he really took it to his opponent. So now Sanger is in a position of advantage, trailing by two points. Forty-five seconds to go, second period, and Cruz isn't going anywhere in that Come position. Guys, and as a matter of fact, Richard Gray says nobody's going anywhere. We're going to pull this one apart and then start over. Two undefeated wrestlers, identical records, 36 and 0. And look at the pins. Sanger, 31 pins out of 36 wins. And Cruz, 25 pins himself. Okay, good start. Set. There's Rick Sanger. This is the 189-pound class, 1A division. I'll tell you, Cruz looked like he wanted maybe to switch, and he almost put himself on his back. In fact, he did. He had a little help there from Sanger, but Sanger wasn't able to get the back points. He couldn't keep him for two seconds. Well, Sanger's coming on right now. He's feeling good, and he's put a, got a real tight waist there, and he'd like to try to get the half in or something like that. And, he and needs it because he's two down. That's right. He's got to continue to work here and try to turn Cruz over. Cruz has got to be cognizant that he has been called for stalling now. He, he calls a double stalling. I don't. And that means a point goes against Cruz. Sanger gets a point because he had been warned earlier. And it's now four to three with eight seconds to go in the second period. You know, these wrestlers have been really going at each other. There's a lot of activity right here. I think, I think they've done a nice job. Red down. So Sanger's going to start down in the third period. And if he can escape, it's tied. Coach Ron Peterson there, his assistant coach. Somebody started a little bit too quickly, I think. And so there'll be a caution. Who was it? Still don't know. Cruz leading four to three starts on top. Now Sanger faces into him. Again, they come to that single leg position. And Cruz is, hand, is letting go now. Look at the hip action by Sanger. He's got good position right now. Hipping down on the head of Cruz and trying now to keep him off the leg or pick the hands off the leg. It's a tough position here for Cruz. Well, he's just got to keep saying, well, and he's, he's not going from being reversed. And here comes Sanger. He's going to take the lead if he can get away from that arm. A minute 20 to go. 4-3 in favor of the man on the bottom. And Going the same way. You're still down. Stalemate. Each man 36 and 0. I think you can see why. There's Coach DeLeon. Long time coach at Brit. Great program. Great wrestler himself. Sanger gets to his feet. He's been able to turn in pretty well against Cruz. But here's Cruz with a single leg position. Did nicely. That time was able to bring Sanger back to the mat again. Less than a minute left in this match. It's four to three. Cruz ahead of Sanger from Brit. An overtime match, by the way, over in 3A between Van Wetzing and Riesland. They just started the overtime there. Here's Cruz with a one-point lead and 40 seconds to protect it. And, and, and I don't know. Oh, I think he's going to be called. We got one. Red. And well, it was a tie. Yep. And Red wasn't doing anything on the bottom uh, any more than Cruz was on top. It's. I hope they just can go. settle it themselves here. I think Wade Cruz is going to have to just put this. Yeah. He's a little upset. He's going to have to put this behind him and just go at it here. 39 seconds to go. Now, what does he do? 
Is he going to let the man go and take him down? He's willing to let him go. He hasn't let him go yet. But Sanger came right in at him. Cruz. Was he given an escape? No game. No game. Nope. No, because apparently uh, the reaction time wasn't there, so Cruz is still 4-4 with 16 seconds to go. And now, if, if Sanger escapes, Cruz doesn't really have time to get back. Well, Cruz should just hang on right there, hold on to the cross right there. Sanger's trying to come through, cut across for the two points. Two. And they'll go overtime. Yeah. Two oh, penalty God, points is. took that into overtime. So they'll do a two-minute overtime. We have overtime from two matches at 189 pounds. OT. OT. The one at the, uh, while we're getting ready to set this one up, they're going to go right at it. The AAA match is settled. That was Ryan Riesland, I believe, won that one. Or did he? No, it was Rusty Van Wetzinger, Pleasant Valley. Van Wetzinger was the winner over Riesland, five to three in overtime at heavyweight. Now this is sudden death. Whoever scores takes home the turkey. Whoever scores or whoever gets called stalling against him, uh, you know, I'd hate to see that happen right there. Let's. There's a single leg by Cruz. He's in tight. He has to do something with it. Now, Cutting off his head to the outside. Sanger, the powerful body. And there it is. There's a two. And so Cruz, well-deserved victory by Cruz there over a very tough competitor in Sanger. Great match. Both of them nice deserve match, a lot. Guys. They do. Neither one of them lost a match coming into this final. Somebody had to lose, and Cruz was the winner, the state champion from Clarksville, Allison Bristow, over Rick Sanger. And that was Cruz. Look at this shot right here, in on the double, around the hips, he really crunched uh, Sanger hard there. It was a nice winning takedown, he knows it. Neither one of them had the firepower. <laughs> they got to the overtime they had earlier in the match. I tell you, they've been wrestling for three days here, and that's not easy. We still have a 1-1 tie with a minute and 37 seconds to go in overtime at 2A. At, uh, now, I'll tell you, we've had three overtimes, 189 pounds. And this is between Matt Eckerman in the red uniform and Frank Bachman of Glenwood in the black. A minute 20 to go. In the overtime, one to one. Sudden death here as well. I'd say if people had their money's worth, 189 yeah. pounds, TJ. It's on Iowa Public Television, live from Veterans Auditorium. They come back to the center. Referee is Chris Hankin from Lisbon. In the black, Glenwoods, Frank Bachman on the right. Matt Eckerman in the red from Forest City. Coached by Steve Kapos, Bob Dyer from Glenwood. Glenwood's already had one state champion here tonight. There's a single leg, head to the outside. All he needs to do is cut off, Eckerman. take it a double. There he does. Now he just has to set him down. And was he able to do it? Yes. Only takedown in the match. Three to one, and it was sudden death overtime. Matt Eckerman. I don't know very many people. I haven't heard anybody complain about the idea of the sudden death for overtime. Boy, you no, know, I haven't heard. One uh, you know, you want, it makes you wonder how we put up with uh, the criteria for so many years. Let's go to the awards at 171 1A. Sixth place, Jason Bardsley, Underwood. Fifth place, Corey Eldridge, State Center West Marshall. Fourth place, Chad Trulson, Britt, West Hancock. Third place, Mike Silver, Central City. Runner-up, Todd Gray, Gilbertville, Don Bosco. And the 1A 171-pound champion from Marengo, Iowa Valley, Kirk Rathje. Kirk Rathje, champion. In a very flashy way. I, well, I won't say flashy, but very solid, workmanlike way. He was a good champion 
at 171 pounds. From Marengo, Iowa Valley, here come the two A's. Class 2A, 171-pound awards. Coach Ron Wasaba of Humboldt. Sixth place, Brian Arzani, Adel DeSoto. Fifth place, Robert Army, West Liberty. Fourth place, Chad Utley, New Hampton. Third place, Jason Salves, Clear Lake. Runner-up, Richie Ludwig, Dyersville Beckman. And the 2A, 171-pound champion from Humboldt, Tony Ursland. Tony Ursland at 171. Coached by Ron Lasova. We still have one more class to go at 171. The award winners, the top six from the original 16 in the pairings here. Presenting the class 3A, 171-pound awards. Freshman coach, Waterloo West, Ernest Middleton. Sixth place, Jamie Miller, West Des Moines Valley. Fifth place, Josh Lathrop, Cedar Rapids, Jefferson. Fourth place, Matt Ferencrug, Davenport West. Third place, Chad Rhodes, Newton. Runner-up, Chad Niles, Charles City. And the Class 3A, 171-pound champion from Waterloo West, Ernest Middleton. Out of way, Ernest. He's, he did it with lightning. He had a fast pin down at his championship. Deserves to try. Let's go to that Dick Trotter fellow down here and find out what happened in his match. You're seeing it right now, Doug. That's Rusty Van Wetzing of Pleasant Valley. Finally wins the title. Fourth in 90, second in 91. Tonight winning in overtime, sudden death over Ryan Riesland of Webster City by the margin of five to three. And now here's Dean. IFB. This is Chris Lembeck of Lisbon, new coach at Lisbon this year. Uh, you've come into a very successful program, crowned two state champions here tonight. What's it keep, what's it take to keep the Dynamo going? Well, first of all, you know, you got to start these kids young. Uh, a successful kids program is a key to a good high school program. I understand that there are discussions underway now with Lisbon and Mount Vernon and other adjoining districts because numbers are down there. You might merge programs. Yeah, the, the numbers are down. And they're discussing the possibilities of that right now, but uh, no decisions have been reached at this point in time. And when will they be? Uh, in April. Thank you, Chris. Congratulations on your cha state champions tonight. Thank you very much. Doug? Thank you, Dean Borg. Let's go to the 275-pound class. These are the heavyweights. It's called 275. You have to weigh in these days. And we're going to the AAA, where we have the state championship team represented here in the red. This is Mark Mitchell, Brad Smith's heavyweight. And his opponent is Spencer's Gabe Toft. Referee's Bill Rhodes from New Hampton. And also, up in the uh, corner, we'll show you some of the other people involved here at other, other levels. Kerry Meyer is wrestling for Britt West Hancock against Matt Sauer of Moville Woodbury Central for the 1A championship. And for 2A, Aaron Klosterman of Vinton is trying to protect his undefeated record and win a state championship against Adam Greiner of Mid Prairie Wellman. Two, two outstanding people in that 2A final also. Seven offense, guys, let's go. Well, Mitchell from Iowa City High got here by upsetting the number one ranked wrestler in, in uh, AAA at heavyweight in the semifinals. Gabe Toft was not able to get behind him and inbounds. So there's no score here yet. 111. Well, Brad Smith has someone that knows a little bit about heavyweights in this corner sitting with him, and Andy Heyman, who wrestled city high, heavyweight, also wrestled for the Hawkeyes, and probably does a little bit of work with Come on, guys, let's Mark go, Mitchell. Let's go. Mark in. Mitchell, Turn city in. high. To the middle. There he drops in on a single leg, and he's got two in a hurry. Did he get it? Yes, he was given the takedown, and Gabe Toff takes one back with the escape. But City High's Mitchell leads two to one. Mitchell was a state qualifier last year, and Toff placed six last year. He's in on that single leg outside again. He did a nice job. He goes after that one well. He's, he's not quite as big as Toff, and so he goes outside him with the angle. He wasn't able to finish at that time. 
But that's the way he got the first takedown. Well, we heard Chris Limbeck talk about the, the importance of a good kids program. There we're looking at Brad Smith. The importance of a kids program, and that is usually the case. But Gabe Toft is the example of someone that didn't come through a kids program. Last year when he placed sixth as a junior, it was his first year of wrestling. You're kidding. No. Would I kid you? Every Just chance you get, but, I'll, Brad, but uh, I don't think Brad you did here. And I, That's impressive down, Gabe Brad. Toft. He was 31 and four coming in here. That's his coach. Frank Bo Set. Bover from Robert, Spencer Robert. in his second year at Spencer as the head coach. He's been the, at Spencer for 14 years, 12 of them as an assistant coach. Two to one is the score. The man on the bottom, Mark Mitchell of City High leads. And the thing, you know, they say basketball players can't make wrestlers. What, was, what do you think he was doing until he wrestled his junior year all his life? You guessed it, playing basketball till his junior year, finished sixth, and now he's in the finals. Out of bounds, that's uh, the officials. Bill Roach from Hampton Brown. says Brown that's an escape. One ring. Said they were even when they went over the line, and so it's a tie, it's, it's now 3-1. Mitchell has an additional point. And they're back on their feet again. Good quick move by Mitchell in defense to get out of the way of Toff's shot. And Toff shows his power and he has oh, Mitchell on his back here with a tough half. He's got a half Nelson. We Not enough of one. He got some nice points there. 5-3. Two points for the reversal, or two points for the takedown and two points for a near fall. He didn't hold him five seconds, but he had him long enough for two. Let's go. Hustle back now. Let's go. Let's There's go. a takedown right here. He drives into him, and he keeps Set. chest to chest there. See how he uses his head? Used his head, then got his chest to chest there Set. and got the extra points. Cover a minute to go, second period. You think Dave Brad, Brad Smith thinking that Louis Pelzang's uh, win's looking bigger and bigger to no, him? Oh, isn't it? That, isn't it? They had two chances. Iowa City had to win one of the two matches. Pelsing. And they got it done this way. with Pelsing. Look at oh. this. Now see, here comes Mitchell out. He's, one he's able to escape there. One green. Bring it up to 5-4 now with 40 seconds to go in the second period. You want to put it back in? Okay, I need injury time. Red. Injury red. Mitchell. Contact. Is taking time because of an injury. And we've got a pin almost happening on 2A, and Down that on. is um, Greiner with Klosterman on his back. Greiner from Mid Prairie, his only loss this year. His only loss this year. Here we are, that's that's Greiner on top from Mid Prairie yeah. Wellman. His only loss is to the guy he's got on his back right there, Klosterman, who is undefeated from Benton. There's an injury timeout at uh, AAA, so you're not missing anything up there at all. We'll hang on to this and see what happens because Klosterman is in real trouble against Greiner. Real trouble. And a lot of time left. Minute 18. The officials, Larry Blaker, Perry. That's the TV match up there in the corner. That's the main match we were watching at AAA. But we'll hang with this, with this uh, possible fall. Well, what Greiner wants to do is settle in. He's got a minute left to do it. And he's trying to really make it tight. He does and it. He got him. Big win for Mid Prairie Wellman. Adam Greiner wins the state championship and avenges his loss. Only a junior. Be back next year. So we're going to go back Turn over to in. AAA and watch uh, Gabe Toff Turn wrestle in. Mark Mitchell after we see the congratulations to Greiner. Go neutral. Let's now they're in the blue again. That's Gabe Toft of Spencer. Mark Mitchell of City High. In the red, wrestling him, and Toff leads five to four with just about eight seconds to go in the second period. No! They're out of bounds with three seconds to go. And they'll have one period to go, and this is the 275-pound class. No such thing as unlimited anymore. Okay, guys, third period. Red and twice. Let him go down. Let him go down. Set it. All right, Toft starts under. Mitchell has to figure out what he wants to do here. He's Mitchell of Iowa City, City High, Lee is trailing by one point, and he's on the top position. Can he turn Toft? He's going to try. 
minute 40 left. He has to turn him or let him up and try to take him down. And he'll, he'll probably work to turn him for a while. And then change his tactics right there. He decided to let him go. So now it's six to four in favor of Toft. A two point difference. Mitchell needs a takedown to tie. Toft is very strong. Yeah, he just, look, he packs it in there. You can just see, yeah, look at that, red. those muscles. There's Brad Smith. Kind of in a daze right now. It's a nice daze for him, but he'd like to cap it off Two with three red. victories. There's, there's the takedown for Toft of Spencer, which puts him up by four now with a minute to go in the last period. Oh, now he's taking Mitchell to his back. He had the cross face in there, and that was almost a near fall. He's, he's strong and, and looking stronger, as a matter of fact. I think he has a cradle locked up. Well, and just a couple of years ago, all his two and three pointers came from the perimeter. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. He does he have a cradle. He had it for a second, and then he let it go. 40 seconds to go. Four-point lead for Toff. Now, is this the kind of wrestler no! you figure if you're a college coach, maybe you take a chance on him because oh. he's got a lot to learn? You if I was a college go. coach, I wouldn't be thinking I was taking a big chance on him. It's what you call a project with a lot of chance for success. And so I'll bet there are some that didn't know about him, and they know about him now. Yeah, Doug, that's a great point because, you know, you get into you probably redshirting time. the first year possibly, and you got an outstanding prospect. And he also, uh, the other thing I like about him, he's looking stronger than he was at the beginning of the match. He is... Let's go, buddy. He's a power right now with 18 seconds to go, leading by four. Not much a chance of burnout either because of too many years of wrestling. In. <laughs> five seconds. Five seconds to a state title for Spencer's Gabe Toff. He is the winner. Wow. And does that, Iowa, is that City High win? The oh, match before this looked big now. What a win for Pelzang and that was a eight to four. Game talk of Spencer. Basketball's loss is wrestling's game. Let's get the awards at 189. First of all, 1A. And the class 1A, 189-pound awards, Coach Ron Peterson of Clarksville, Allison Bristow. <laughs> Sixth place, Chad Codum, West Lion, Inwood. Fifth place, Ted Hahn, Highland of Ainsworth, Riverside. Fourth place, Chad Miller, Stuart Menlo. Third place, Bob Bleakley, Kingsley Pearson. Runner-up, Rick Sanger, Britt West Hancock. And the 1A 189-pound champion from Clarksville, Allison Bristow, Wade Crozy. Now the 189-pound winners, 2A. Sixth place, Sean Hammer, Bloomfield, Davis County. Fourth place, Bill Tarasowitz, Mediapolis. Fourth place, Scott Bancroft, Humboldt. Third place, Chris Nichols, Durant. Runner-up, Frank Bachman, Glenwood. And the 2A 189-pound champion from Forest City, Matt Eckerman. And that's the... 2A champion, 189 pounds. Let's go, let's go quickly to Dean Borg. We didn't get the uh, score of the, the, uh, 275 at 1A. 275 pounds, uh, Class A. Matt Sauer is the champion. He's from Mobile, West Central. Mobile, West Central, 9 to 3 over Kerry Meyer. Doug? All right, thank you, Dean. We'll have the awards in that heavyweight match a little bit later. 189, 3A. Okay, class, please. Presenting the Class 3A 189-pound awards, Coach Royce Duncan of Pleasant Valley. Sixth place, Jamie Strickler, Marshalltown. Fifth place, Ben Freestone, Cedar Falls. Fourth place, Rob Campbell, Oskaloosa. Third place, Brett Jones, Cedar Rapids Prairie. 
Runner up Ryan Riesland Webster City. And the 3A 189 pound champion from Pleasant Valley Rusty Van Wetzinga. And every one of those 189 pound championships was settled in overtime. Let's go to Dick Trotter. All right, Doug, there you see it. Adam Greiner, a junior, has made Mid Prairie Wellman proud because tonight it's their first state championship ever, and he's an excited lad after pinning Aaron Klosterman of Vinton with 54 seconds left in the match. That's the story on Class 2A in the 275-pound uh, weight class, Doug. Thank you very much, Dick Trotter. We're going to get the heavyweight awards, the 275s, I want to mention, too. All this is really made possible by funds that are generated through the festival, and we want to talk about that in a little while. The team standings are right there in the 1A, first of all. Lisbon won it actually on Friday. You notice they have more points than the second two teams put together. Lisbon with another team championship, 13. The first for Chris Lembeck as a coach. That's 1A. Then at 2A, it was Wapolo. We're looking at, let's go, let's go to the awards right now. There's a 2A uh, standing Wapolo win. We're going to see the heavyweight award winners too, by the way. Uh, 275 class, with beginning with the 1A. Osage and Decora tied for third. Washington managed to come up there and Take away position number five in 2A. Now they're waiting for, I think, one of the, probably the coach. Yeah, I guess so. They have everybody there but the coach. He's still celebrating. Man up on top. Yeah, that's right. He's out being pounded on the back and having his hand shaken. Here comes the 3A championship. This was the one that wasn't settled until late in the tournament. Tonight, City High by a point over Cedar Falls. If it was an election, they'd probably have a recount. <laughs> West Des Moines dialing 75 and a half, and Cedar Rapids Prairie and Charles City also up there. That was a good, close tussle among the larger schools. I want to mention, too, as I started to say, it's almost festival time on Iowa Public Television. Before we see the final awards here and the team trophy presentations, we want to mention that really all of this makes is made possible by you and by others who are interested in making sure that Iowa Public Television has the money it needs, and the festival is the place where it happens. And boy, do we have some great programs for you this year as the festival starts on March 8th. We'll tell you more later. Here's the 1A award. Fifth place, Tony Bolas, Lisbon. Fourth place, Brandon Saul, Elkhorn Pimodon. Third place, Mike Christensen, Lennox. Runner-up, Kerry Meyer, Britt, West Hancock. And the Class 1A heavyweight champion from Mobile, Woodbury Central, Matt Sauer. Matt Sauer, a 1A champion. So now the 1A top six steps aside and makes way for the uh, 2A. Here in Veterans Auditorium in Des Moines. Coach Jim Caton of Mid Prairie Wellman. Sixth place, Chase Roller, Carson Macedonia. Fifth place, Joe Halbrook, Sadel Des Moines. Fourth place, Vince Brown, Bloomfield, Davis County. Third place, Jay Huff, Sheldon. Runner up, Aaron Klosterman, Benton. And the 2A heavyweight champion from Mid Prairie Wellman, Adam Greiner. He won it the way he likes to win it. He won it by a fall. Adam Griner. Time to smile, Adam. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you don't have to prove it anymore. <laughs> and we'll get the three A's before the team trophies are awarded here in Veterans Auditorium in Des Moines, the scene of the 1992 High School Wrestling Championships. Spencer. Sixth place, Ryan Culver, West Des Moines Valley. Fifth place, Brian Scarborough, Waterloo, Columbus. Fourth place, Brad Pike, Cedar Rapids, Jefferson. Third place, Rick Clendenin, Cedar Rapids, Washington. Runner-up, Mark Mitchell, Iowa City, City High. And the Class 3A heavyweight champion from Spencer, Gabe Toff. Gabe 
Toff. 3A champion tonight, Drew Spencer. We're going to have the team trophies awarded here. Let's go to Mo Kelly. Members of the Board of Control of the Iowa High School Athletic Association will present the trophies in Class 1A. The Board of Control members, to my far right, is Doug Williams, Superintendent of Schools at Boone United and Gilbert. In the center is Eldon Pyle, Superintendent of Schools at Old Wine, and closest to me is Bob Nielsen, Superintendent of Schools, Westside Arweva. In Class 1A, if these teams would come forward when I announce your names, with 60 points, the third place team in 1A, coached by Rex Murhoff, is Anita. The second place team, second place team in class 1A, coached by L. DeLeon, is Britt West Hancock with 73 points. And our second place, Britt West, West Hancock. Anita got third place through the consolation, so didn't have anybody in the finals. And there, and Did there, they? well, they may have. I may have forgotten somebody. But here comes Lisbon again. Heard they were going to have to have a, a school expansion there. That's right, Dad Brian Palmer, who got him third place. Make a new trophy case. And yeah, for Lisbon. Way yeah. to present the awards. Ron Bickford, superintendent of schools at Danville. Ron is closest to me. In the center is Roland Dyer, athletic director at Atlantic. And next to Mr. Dyer is Robert Nielsen, superintendent of schools at Westside Arweva. In class 2A, we had a two-way tie for third place with identical point totals of 51. Those two teams with a tie for third Roger Williams, coach, and Decora. And Bruce Gant, the head coach, and his squad from Osage, if they come forward. Decora and Osage. Flip a coin? I don't know. Maybe, Maybe they'll have to wrestle to, again to see yeah. who gets the trophy. Just to see who gets to take it home because I'm sure they'll be giving it to both. You see Dave Hardy there on the left. He's saying that uh, he's going to reach into his own pocket and he's going to no, buy it, the uh, it's a you know, It's a jump trophy. They're going to jump the trophy. <laughs> they'll each have it. They'll have identical Okay, that's 2A with 52 points. The runner-up, Coach Bob Dyer and Glenwood. There are the Glenwood young men from Western Iowa. Championships got spread around the state pretty well. State runner-up in 2A. The championship team has 65 points. Coach Southeast Iowa. Nineteen ninety-two. Put one on the trophy case. They had a couple of upsets in there against them, but they had it wrapped up before they got to the finals. To represent the Department of Education on our board of control. In the middle is Terry Egan, principal at Oskaloosa. Next to Mr. Egan, Bob Nielsen, superintendent of schools, Westside Arweva. The third place team in class 3A, 75 and one half points, Coach Ron Gray and West Des Moines Dowling. 
Well, they're used to coming out and getting a trophy every year, aren't they, Doug? They sure are. They had a champion tonight in Coppola. They're one champion. Second place, the runner-up team in 3A, 85 and one-half points. Coach Gene Doyle and Cedar Falls. Gene Doyle was the coach of the year as well as coaching the second place team. And they came so close to winning the Okay, title. our championship team in class 3A with 86 and one half points. Coach Brad Smith in Iowa City, City. Well, we've heard the Coach Brad Smith part a lot before, but this is the first time you've ever heard Iowa City High in the same breath as the first place trophy in 3A. And it's a big one. The 1992 High School Wrestling Championships from Des Moines, 66th annual. They've had a great time, they're now history. And this is our wrap up, this is our wrap up for the uh, 1992 wrestling season as a matter of fact. And if you liked uh, what you have been seeing this year or you wanna do your best to see that it happens year after year, Remember that festival is coming up on March 8th and it goes through March 22nd here on Iowa Public Television and it's a, it's a most important event because it does really provide the kinds of funds that make these occasions possible. College Wrestling Series. If you are a fan of college wrestling or of the high school championships, well, there's the place you can, you can help out because we really enjoy bringing these to you every year. The uh, College Wrestling Series and this live show from uh, Veterans Auditorium every year. And it's a lot of fun. We have more fun than anybody, don't we? Well, we sure do. We get to see all the matches. It's just super, and it's uh, just wonderful working with uh, Iowa Public Television. Yeah, they do a great job. Because we do have, we uh, want to thank, too, Dean Borg and Dick Trotter. But, of course, our crew, they make it so easy for us. Yeah. This is the best wrestling crew. We, can, we hear it from you. The best wrestling crew, the cameras and the, and the production work in the business and that's anywhere in the sport of wrestling that's anywhere and we're just proud to tag along and and uh, to say something about the pictures that they show us and that we all show you it's been fun this year and we hope that you'll enjoy it again next year help out at festival time and we'll make sure it happens well here let's see the team standings again this is a final look at how it happened lisbon wins in 1a Wapolo in 2A, Iowa City High in 3A. Well, those are all Eastern Iowa teams this year. All not very, could, not very far apart. You could draw a uh, very tight circle there. Yes, you certainly could. So it's a big year in 1992 for Eastern Iowa Wrestling and Championships. From Veterans Auditorium and Veterans Auditorium in Des Moines. Remember again, on festival, We'd like your comments, too, on our sports programming this winter, either on college wrestling meets or on tonight's high school championship. If you'd like to write us, our address is I, Iowa Public Television Sports and the care of Iowa Public Television, Box 6450, Johnston, Iowa. Box 6450, Johnston, Iowa. And the zip, five, the zip, post office box 6450 there, and the zip is 50131. Now stay tuned for our evening program schedule, will you? First, it's the Bix Jazz Festival. It's old-time country music and then new country video. Quality public television on Iowa Public Television Network, a resource for Iowa's future. Good night for Iowa Public Television.
major funding for this program was provided by friends of iowa public television.